Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Those following us online, you're most welcome. You're part of us. Open your heart. There's no distance in the spirit. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'd like to start tonight. We have a lot to cover. Just to prepare our hearts before we go into our discussions. This was a vision that Jeremiah had with the Lord. Jeremiah 1, and we'll start reading from verse 4. We're reading down to 12. Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 to 12. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then Jeremiah replies, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Verse 7, But the Lord said unto me, saying, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. He said, Be not afraid of their face, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Now this is the verse of emphasis, 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and he said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Verse 10. See, I have this day. Listen, this is God revealing to a man the possibilities that can become of his life if he dares to believe God. How can God give such a prophetic word to a little child who just complained that his major problem was his inadequacy? God acted as if he did not know the boy was talking about the limitation that his age had created for him. He said, see, listen, I have said this day, I have said, uh, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. That is the prophetic word. This is what I want to do with your life. This is how far I want to do business with you. Verse 11, moreover, in continuation, he says, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, this is what I want to do with your life, but what is your perception? He says, what seest thou? I've shown you what I see about your life, but what do you see? And then Jeremiah said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then the next verse, he says, Then said the Lord unto me, 
thou hast what? Well seen. Please give us any other version. NIV, any other version. It says, thou hast well seen. There's a version that says, thou hast seen correctly. I don't know exactly which of them, but just, just give us any other version that has a different rendition. NIV says, you have seen what? You have seen Jeremiah, this is your prophetic destiny. Regardless of your age and your background, regardless of your limitations, I have set you. When? He said, this day. Not when you grow up. In my mind, this day, I have set you over nations to root out, pull down, uproot, build. But then he says, the only limitation to this prophecy coming to pass now is what you can see. And then he says, what seest thou? He says, I see the rod of an almond tree. And then he says, you have seen correctly. On the strength of your correctness, you have authorized me to watch, to see that my word which you have seen and agreed with me must come to pass. He says, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Please give us Amplified. Amplified says, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform. Right? He says, I am alert and active, watching over my word. Hallelujah. He starts by revealing to Jeremiah his prophetic destiny in Christ. Jeremiah begins to lament. Theologically speaking, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. The nature and the character of the anointing upon his life was such that he was always raising a lamentation. And that anointing altered his form to respond to the kind of message that he would communicate. It was a reflection of the burden that was upon him. So oftentimes you would hear him weeping as he communicated his thoughts from God. And so Jeremiah as a little boy was being shown a great destiny who at that time never believed that it would come to pass and he began to complain. The same complaint happened with Moses in Exodus chapter 3. Don't turn there. The Bible says when God saw that he turned aside right to see the great sight, he said, Moses, take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground. Are we together now? After he showed Moses everything, Moses started complaining and said, but Lord, you know I'm a stammerer. And then his unbelief grieved the heart of God. And God spoke fiercely to him. He said, who created the mouth? If I can show you, I can turn your rod to a serpent. If I can cause fire in a bush, yet not burn, what does it take? To heal you of stammering. He says because you have limited me. I will use you to the degree you believe me. But since the issue of speaking you did not believe me. I will raise Aaron to be a spokesman. It was never God's intention for Aaron to be Moses' spokesman. He was supposed to be healthy and healed. Are we together? His limitation affected the dimension to which God could find expression in him. Please pay attention to this. You see, every time God calls a man, God does not just begin to use the man because he's called. Because oftentimes, the vessel that God calls is either an unbeliever or having all kinds of thinkings and paradigms that are not consistent with God. You see that happen to all the patriarchs. Abraham, for a long time, when God began to speak to him about his child coming, Abraham, for a long time, listen, he tried to agree, but the reality of his supposed impotency and Sarah's barrenness to a point where Sarah laughed. She laughed when the angel spoke and said she would be the mother of nations. God could not do so much with Abraham until one time God told Abraham, come out. When he came out, he said, try to count the stars. Abraham tried and tried and tried and finally he couldn't count it. 
He says, so shall thy seed be. And then the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God. He agreed with God. Oh, now I understand what you are trying to tell me. And then the Bible says, it was credited, reckoned unto him for righteousness. It is not just enough to know that God is mighty. Please listen. The dynamics of impact, the dynamics of doing great things for the kingdom does not just lie on the recognition that God is mighty. As great and mighty as God is, if that is the scope of your revelation about him, um, you will be blessed. It will impart reverence and awe, but you will not be able to do much. The idea of his revealing his might to you is so that it can get you to a point where you are convinced about anything he wants to do in and through your life. So that the revelation of his might will swallow away what you may hold to be limitations in your life. Here he meets Jeremiah and says, Jeremiah, I want to do business with you. And Jeremiah comes as a young boy says, Lord, I've heard about you doing great things with people and prophets. Now you are telling me I'm a prophet, but I'm limited. My background, my ideologies are limiting me. And God began to challenge his perception. The series that we've been taking on the secrets of the kingdom are an attempt to reveal the walking principles of the kingdom. I call them secrets or mysteries. The very laws upon which impact in the kingdom is founded. Your ability to understand this thing and agree with God becomes your key to an enviable life of impact. Your inability to understand will limit God greatly in your life. So please pay attention. You see, it is the word of God that transforms. But I've shared it again and I'll keep drumming it until it becomes a persuasion. There is a system through which the word transforms. Excuse me. The word does not transform people just by entering them and doing something magical. No, that's not how the word works. Write this word down, word, W-O-R-D is the Greek word logos. And that word logos, it does not just mean the speakings of a man. Right? The, the root word that is translated logos is the word thoughts. Please write it down. Thoughts. Like thinking. Thoughts. Is the word idea. Write it down. Is the word opinion. Opinion is the word paradigm. Paradigm. And it is also the word mindset. So when we say the word of God, we are not just saying the things God is saying. No, we are saying the, the understandings that construct his mind. Are you following me now? When we say the word of God transforms, that word, word is not just the speakings of God, like his communication from his mouth to you. It means his ideas. It means his ideology. It means God's opinion about everything. Let me tell you how we are changed. When your life consistently keeps realigning to God's own idea about everything, are we together? So you find out what God's perspective is about divine health and about the reality of you staying healthy. And you compare that to your current state. They tell you you have SS. They tell you you have all kinds of sicknesses that destroy you. But you find out his word is a compendium of his perspective about you. And so he tells you by his stripes, I am healed have been healed if the spirit that raised Christ from the dwell right dwells in your mortal body the Bible says that same spirit will revitalize now that's his opinion 
you can be aware of it and still remain sick. Or you can choose to subscribe to that new ideology and watch the word of God come to pass in your life. You see, God is alert, ensuring that all those who truly believe his word live with a testimony. It may take a while, brothers and sisters, but as surely as you correctly believe God, give him time. There must be a performance in your life. Say amen. I am amazed at how many believers think their lives will change just because they are born again. I am more amazed at the preachers that teach Christians every week that all it takes to triumphant success in the kingdom is just to surrender your heart to the Lord and go to bed. That looks very spiritual. It is very evangelical. But it's not the accurate presentation of God's thoughts as far as our success is concerned. Something in that equation is missing. And this is why people get born again. And they say, I'm born again. I'm a believer. Why are things not changing in my life? Everything I used to suffer before, I'm still suffering them after. And I'll tell you why. Because you see, you receive salvation through faith, an act of God's grace. But there is a partnership with you to activate the realities. The Bible says that we draw out of the wells of salvation. Everybody say wells. Not just one. Salvation as a package is broken down into different systems of possibilities. Your finances, your health, your life, the operation of the spirit in your life, your spiritual growth. It is now left for you through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to walk with the word of God and change your mindset. Please hear me. I am, I am a firm believer that a believer who has refused renewal will experience the exact same thing with an unbeliever. The only difference is the security of his eternal salvation. But as far as the earth is concerned, there will be no, absolutely no difference as far as kingdom exploit is concerned. Are we together? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3. And he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And then Jesus responds to Nicodemus in verse 3 of John 3. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you. He said, except a man be born again. He said, he shall not, he cannot see the kingdom. He uses the word see the kingdom. Are we together? Verse 3. Verse 4. Nicodemus responds and says, ah, How can a man now be born again when he is old? Will he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Then Jesus explains his concept. Verse 5. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and the spirit. Then he switches terminologies. He says, He shall not it's one thing to see the kingdom, but it's another thing to enter the experience of the kingdom. I call it prophetic realities and experiential manifestations. It is one thing to hold the prophetic word of God. It is another thing to enter the experience of it. Between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass is a process. That process is your degree of alignment. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. This will hold the key out of every life of pain and shame and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you tonight? I watch people very innocently, well-meaning people live under the expectations of God 
and they are not doing anything about it. Some are waiting for God to do something about it. So you hear people call and say, man of God, I don't know what is happening in my life. I serve the Lord, I go to church, but nothing is happening. And the biggest area largely is the area of finances. Nothing is changing. Is God so wicked? No, he's not. There are systems in the kingdom. Everybody says systems. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles. Listen. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping, maturing, perfecting, building up of the saints. So that the saints will not keep misunderstanding him. God wants to be understood. There is something about the thinking of God that men do not understand. And so he anointed certain people and said, explain to people that I'm not the reason why their lives are that way. There is an understanding they do not have. Listen, he anointed some. He didn't anoint them to be noisemakers. He didn't anoint them to be offering raisers. He didn't anoint them to just be jeep drivers. He anointed them for the maturing. If you are in the fivefold ministry and you are not contributing to demystifying the kingdom, you are wasting God's time on earth. The role of the fivefold ministry is to present the kingdom. Make it clear. Let the inhabitants, believers understand. By the time they see the spiritual logic to God's system, they will now say, ah, I see. It's not that God is wicked. I never knew that there is a system like this. I never knew that godliness with contentment is great gain. I never knew that my not tithing is what is authorizing the devourer. I have prayed. I never knew that as powerful as prayer is, is not the only key to opening doors in the kingdom. So the fivefold ministry. By grace, it's not just about their spiritual life. There is an anointing that comes upon them and gives them an advantage. A superior working of the spirit in their life gives them uncommon understanding to the working knowledge of the kingdom. To the end that they will now call believers and say, guys, I found it. I think I've seen the reason why you are not anointed. Uh, it's not just about prayer and fasting your motif. And then the person says, really? I, I came from a background that is not so good and um, I'm naturally inclined to wanting power and wanting a, a sense of self-worth. And you say, no, I've studied the kingdom and I've found out that once your motif is to glorify yourself, you cannot have the anointing. Are you seeing now? The fivefold ministry, you have edified that person. So he goes back in prayer scans his motif and say Lord I change my, my mindset I change my understanding it's no longer about being a celebrity it's about seeing your kingdom come at once he satisfies the condition for the power of God that same person will have a dramatic encounter and go for a meeting and suddenly begin to see the power of God because someone adjusted his mindset what you are receiving and what you receive every week. It's not just impartations. It's not just encounters. But you are receiving realignments. The answers to your questions are being dispensed. Are we together now? To the end that you will now find out why certain things may not be working in your life. Now it's up to you to be malleable enough. And say, Lord, I am the porter. I am the clay. You are the porter. Mold me to whatever form. You can argue and say, no, I don't agree with this. And then continue suffering. Or you can say, look, I have, I have found the truth and I will adjust. I like, I like, um, what's his name? That short guy, the tax collector. Zacchaeus. When he climbed the tree, he was a wicked man. He defrauded people because of his office as a tax collector. But his motive was sincere. Now he climbed the tree. I know why he was a wicked man. Because of his size. He probably felt that they were looking down on him. And so he had to amass wealth to cover for something. 
So the issue was not finances. The issue was trying to cover for inferiority. Are we together? And he climbed the tree to see Jesus. And Jesus said, don't climb. It's your house I'm going to. Jesus meets the man. And at once he corrects Zacchaeus' mentality. He says, I didn't come to your house because you are rich. I didn't come to your house because you are tall. In other words, it's not about those things. It's about my love and my grace. You did not qualify, but I came to your house. And Zacchaeus said, that means there's no need defrauding people. At once, he changed his mindset. Are we together now? He started returning everything and said, ah, my amassing money was not because I like money. I was hoping that through it, I will look like royalty so that every celebrity will visit my house. Now Jesus has abused my mentality. And he says, there's no need for that old thinking. We must be like Zacchaeus tonight. Opening up our hearts. And the moment the word of God comes, you don't argue with it. You see, only foolish people argue with the word of God. Especially when you are not getting results in your life. We live in a generation where people are confident to talk about things they know nothing about. Are we together? Someone who doesn't play football, you see him arguing for three hours. He says, I know how much, how we paid them this amount, meaning his team. And he never contributed anything. And he never wonders and says, come, why is my life not working like the person I'm talking about? People argue all around. Why should doctors go on strike? And the person is not even, a, he's not near medicine, he doesn't know anything. We like talking boldly about things we know nothing about. And that's the danger. We keep venting our ignorance. But when we come to God, he requires that we become silent. That's what Mary did. Martha was busy about commanding and talking. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. You are trying to get things done, but one thing is needful. And this Mary has chosen to do what? To sit at the feet. There's something about being still in God's presence. When he was about to feed the 5,000, he said, let them sit down. If you can't sit down, there's no bread for you. Sitting down is a sign of stability. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Oh, but Joshua Selma, you, I have bills to pay tomorrow. Sit down in green pastures. Your running around is not the solution. Let me tell you something. When we go through things, we think God is disturbed the way we are disturbed. And we say, God, keep responding on the go. And God says, I'm not going to talk to you. Prove you trust me by sitting down. In five minutes, that sickness, you are trying to rush and call a doctor outside and God is saying, just sit down. I can address this issue. You can't even raise 3.5 million to go to India. So why don't you sit down and give me time and walk out of this meeting too? I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I respect the word of God. I will never argue with his perspectives. I'm not too proud to admit I am wrong. No, 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 no. Once the word of God challenges my ideologies, I say, Lord, I agree with you. You cannot be wrong. So I'm the one who is wrong here. Anyone who has that kind of spirit is on his way to an enviable destiny. Do you know how long it takes the average believer to adjust to the word of God? Until we exhaust all our options and we are convinced that there is no other way. Then we say, okay, Lord, what were you even saying? And God says, I've been talking for five years. When will you listen to me? Okay, Lord, I admit I'm 35 now. There's no husband. Oh, yeah, let me hear what you have to say. And God is saying, sit down. It's not by hopping up and down. There is a secret. You settle down for six months and enter your marital life. You would have entered it five years ago if you paid attention. The day you listen to God, that becomes your this day. Your this day can be any day. He says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. He said, today, if you will hear his voice, let me tell you something. Time never changes anything. Time only reveals. The day you align to the word of God, that's the day your change starts. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, you're about to speak to me. I'm not rebellious. My heart is open. Go ahead and pray inside and outside. The online community, open your heart and let's pray. Shiba Kato Saba. Shiba Kurato Sapre Teketi Paladaba.
Mambros calabri de shikrea superatu sabrati alabara. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Sing it one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my heart. Hallelujah. Aside from my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the privilege that God has given me to understand and know the person of the Holy Spirit. The next, I would say, biggest gift that God has given me is an understanding of the systems of the kingdom. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom. How the kingdom works. The grace for performance that is on the strength of knowledge. Not just jacking yourself and say it will happen and mocking yourself. Understanding that produces consistent results. And there are so many of them. We've shared a lot of them in this house. But in this series, I took six of them. Six irrefutable laws of the kingdom. That when you walk with, please hear me. When you walk and live by these truths. When you allow the word of God to superimpose your thinking. And it becomes your conviction. And you are diligent to act. I promise you. There will be a performance. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day, not choose the ones you like, to do and observe, keep, live by all these laws that I give unto you. Right? It says that you shall be exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come to you and overtake you. Then he begins to tell you, you will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the country. And all of that, all those blessings. But they are tied to your obedience. They are tied to faith. They are tied to your response, which is a product of your conviction. When you don't believe a thing, you cannot live by it. You cannot act upon it. So we took some laws. The first was the law of encounter. And we spoke about complete surrender. That was the first discussion. That complete surrender is the law that governs the manifestation of the hand of God upon a man. That every time you see a man, a woman, a man of God walking in unusual, strange dimensions of graces. The issue is not criticizing them. The issue is not joining all those band of noisemakers calling everybody around town fake. There are people who have this understanding. The moment they see things they do not understand, they see certain superior levels of graces, they begin to criticize it. Once it is outside of their frame of belief, how can a woman 35 years barren be pregnant? You see that? And they come up with, you would, you would think such a great testimony like this will be received by everybody until you discuss it among critics. They'll say, where is the woman? Bring her. Let's see her and the baby. And let's have a doctor certified that it was 35 years. As if the man forgot when he married his wife. You see how people think. So every time people see unusual levels of grace, they usually will try to find explanations to discredit that is not as powerful as that. But the key 
is complete surrender. Never forget this. Forget about great levels of the anointing when you are still conscious of yourself, your reputation, your anointing, your sermon, the quality of your revelations. You will never touch the anointing that way. Are we together? God will only truly anoint men who become reflectors. Men who have paid the price to be his image bearers. They are reflectors of him, not themselves. A man of God who wants power to build a ministry and prove to people he's anointed will keep sweeping empty grounds and, 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 and keep preaching to empty pews for the rest of his life. Because God is not interested in men making a name for themselves. The name they make is his reward by uh, his reward for them being reflectors of him. Hallelujah. I have seen a lot of preachers come to me and every time they come, their first question is, what is the secret to the anointing? And they think it's just some magic formula. I'll say this and that and that. Eat bitter leaf for one week. Add cabbage. After that, pray. Just put cross on your head for three days and get into power. That's charm. That's, that's not the way it works. It's not a charm you put in your pocket and then you just hide it in your suit. No, those who use that know what they are doing. But those who, you see, true power in the kingdom is a product of relationship. It's a product of relationship. You cannot receive from a God you do not know. You can receive from a herbalist you do not know. You can receive from a native doctor you do not know. You don't even have to know them. But if you want to receive from God, the first assignment is not your hand, it's your heart. My son, give me your heart. So we discuss that complete surrender as the key to unusual grace. Number two was the revelation that realities are only our physical reality is a reflection of a reality greater. Listen to this. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, his mind, so he is. I told you this law, it is the law that births realities in our world. That your physical life is only a looking glass. Are we together? The quality of your life, spiritually and otherwise, is a reflection of something happening inside. Your life is not authorized to change until your mind changes. Anything that is not a reality in your mind cannot be a reality in your life. Genesis 11, God came and saw Nimrod, the son of Cush, mobilize certain people and said, Go to come, let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. The Bible says they burnt mortar and slime and bricks and started building. And then the Bible says God came to look down and see the building which the son of man had built. God said as far as he was concerned, they had finished the building because they had conceived it as a possibility right here. Your life will never change until your mind changes. Let me tell you the danger of trying to change things physically without changing it in your mind. If one million naira enters your hand and there is a poverty mentality in you, that mentality will adjust your behavior to force that money to leave you. And until it leaves you and you become poor, then your mind will interpret it as you being normal. Your mind will interpret wealth as being abnormal because it's not consistent with your beliefs. Are we together? Yeah. So you must make sure that transformation happens first within. You don't change people by just trying to change their physical environment. I gave an illustration one time when I was speaking about transformation. Have you dashed somebody a shirt or a trouser that you used for three years? It's still looking brand new because your mindset made you care for it. You always ironed it. You dashed the person the clothes and in two weeks a shirt that was white has become brown. The person's mind is showing on the shirt. Are we together now? You give that person a shirt. Ordinarily, you wear it for two days and wash it, or one day and wash it. But this guy has worn it for two weeks. Why? Because in his mindset, he says it is not necessary. Neatness is unnecessary. It's only um, an emergency. And once I am not sick, there is no reason why I should be neat. That's what his mindset is telling him. So he wears the shirt for two weeks until everything tears and then he throws it away. 
if the shirt has love written on it, you see that the O has faded or disappeared. Two weeks. It's the same thing that will happen to a corporation when you take the security man and make him the MD and make the MD a security man. You know, most people see wealthy people, for instance, and say, how can we be walking? We are the ones sweeping, opening gates. There is a wicked man sitting under AC, just signing papers, and his salary is 10 million, and we are here receiving 15,000. No, it's not the suit. It's not the AC. It's the mindset. If you want to know, switch them. Take the security man and keep him on that seat. Let me tell you what he will do. We've discussed it, right? He will still stabilize us. He would drink what is in the fridge because his mindset does not teach him that he has capacity to reproduce it. Careful. Hallelujah. That's all right. Let me have your attention. So, with that kind of thinking, look up, please. With that kind of thinking and that kind of faulty understanding, what happens to the person? You know, so, it has to be in your life as it is in your mind. People try to change their physical environment. We use all kinds of things to change our mindsets. So somebody can wear a suit and feel like a CEO, but there's, there's nothing CEO there. You see, so there's nothing to deliver. You can carry complimentary cards and move around and they say, who are you? You say, my name is this and that. I am the CEO. What is your value? I don't understand what you're saying. Because for you to be a CEO, there's something you should have gotten. You ignored it and thought it was all suits. How we fool ourselves. We hate adjusting our minds. But we love trying to fake it in the physical. And Nigerians can fake things. We can fake wealth. You can fake as... You, people act as if they eat fried chicken and, and this every time. Whereas in their mindset, they are living in abject poverty. And they will not make adjustments. And sometimes pastors... In a bit to encourage people, this is what we tell people. Act like your future. And what, what I understand what we mean. We mean change your mindset. But someone now says, okay, I'm hearing, act like your future. And hot son, the person wears suit and tie and is moving. Say, I am a CEO. He carries a bag. And he thinks, I'm acting like my future. And he mocks himself for 10 years. Whereas the first way to act like your future is to think like your future. You must think like your future to become like the future. So the issue is not going to borrow money and now start buying shoes of 10,000 and 15,000 when you cannot afford food of 200 naira. The idea is not to create a fake outer environment. The idea is to begin to give your mindset new information. And inevitably, trust me, trust me people, I know what I'm telling you. Inevitably, your physical environment will become a reflection of your mindset. Our physical environment is only a mirror. Have you seen someone stand before a mirror? Assuming I stand before a mirror and maybe there's something um, on my head or on my shoulder and I'm trying to remove it, will I put my hand inside the mirror to change it? I adjust it here and the man in the mirror adjusts. The man in the mirror is this physical you. The real you is the person within. If that adjustment does not happen, forget about trying to create change. That's why people create temporal changes and then their mindset superimpose it. Are we together? So, I try to act as if I'm a Christian. I'm not serious about God and I'm not serious about the world. But simply because I want to enter a relationship with a lady who comes for koinonia. And she has told me if I don't come for koinonia, no relationship. I come and I fake it. Are we together? While they are singing, I watch people raise their hands. I'm not raising it out of conviction. I don't even know what is happening. And after five minutes, I say, my dear, I'm leaving this place. Because my reality tells me you are supposed to be drinking by eight o'clock. You don't worship God by 8 o'clock. And you have programmed your mind to always drink by evening. While worship is going, you are just remembering that somebody can buy it free. I don't have money, but somebody will buy the beer free. But you are in church just by force. It's the same thing pastors try to do to people. Be nice. Don't be bad. Why are you a bad girl? Change. If she could change, she would not be that way. There is an understanding. 
The key is not to tell people to change. The key is to show them how to change. Hallelujah. As it is within you, so will it be in your life. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it says, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. Don't allow any kind of thing enter your mind. Let me tell you why many of us are confused. We are confused because the informations we allow into our spirits are not constructive. You finish listening to a worship song right now. Two hours of strong worship. Are we together? The moment you finish, you have the selection. You have gospel songs. You have uh, all, all the others, you know, songs like that, well selected. So when you want to feel spiritual, you finish listening to the gospel songs and then you announce a kite, enough of church, I beg. Let me just hype myself and enjoy. And now you put another thing. You are, you are diluting what you spend time on. You finish listening to the word of God and all of a sudden you just put a pornographic movie and you are watching and you are happy and you are laughing. At the end of it, you prayed for two hours, but right now you don't even know what your mind is thinking again. You, 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 the goal was for your mind to think creatively, but all through your mind is thinking about something you are trying to fight because you are feeding it. Are we together? You are feeding it. You go and sit down in the midst of people who are always gossiping. You sit from 10 o'clock till 2, talking about people, tearing down people. And afterwards, you go back and you are surprised that that is your entire thinking. You have to protect your heart. Build a wall around your heart. Don't allow just anything find expression. No. No. There are things I will never be found associating with. Not be, I don't care whether they are good or bad, honestly. I am on a project. I am well aware of how much my life would have changed if I were more renewed than I am now. And I'm on a consistent project to renewing myself. I'm not ready to sabotage that effort through carelessness. Are we together now? Please be careful what you allow in your mind. You allow people keep talking to you. You sit down and talk about somebody who became a millionaire in four months and say, four months, millionaire, there are thieves in Nigeria. I saw one, he's my neighbor. Let me, I'm just waiting for that guy. And you sit down. Let me tell you what you are doing. You are associating wealth with negativism. Your mind cannot agree that you will be blessed because you have already castigated somebody and you have put a benchmark on yourself to never be wealthy. So somebody becomes a millionaire in four months. Instead of you to find out what kingdom principle did he serve, did he practice? What sacrifice? What happened? No, we don't agree. We say, no way. It took me 20 years. Your father will tell you or your mother will tell you to buy my first golf. How can a young man become a millionaire in one month? 20 years, one, uh, four months. It took you 20 years because of what your knowledge could deliver. That's how long it took you to be in the labor room. 20 years. Are we together? There are different ways to get to Lagos. You can trek. You can ride a bike. Are we together? You can follow a luxurious bus. You can have your private car. You can fly. You can take a private charter. You can have your own jet. You will arrive in different conditions. Don't, don't ever make a mistake that you will arrive with the same condition. No. That guy who trekked from when Buhari won, that gentleman, they, they appreciated him, but have, did you see the guy? Yes. That's how life is with many people. We use all kinds of formulas that we think will take us to the place of destiny. And when we find people applying superior kingdom principles, rather than finding out, we argue and we say, no, this is the only way I know. That means that's the only way there is. Tell somebody there is another way. Hallelujah. Say there is another way. Please give us 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the last verse. 1 Corinthians 12, the last verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is changing us. 1 Corinthians 12, the last verse, please. 
Everybody read. It says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Uh huh. Read on. And yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Say there is a more excellent way. The fact that you are doing it the way you know to do, brothers and sisters, hear me, does not mean that is the only way. You can do ministry the way you were taught in the seminary, in Bible school, but that does not mean that is the ultimate way. There is a more excellent way. Are we together? You can manage your family the way you know. You can try to know God the way you have been taught, but there is a more excellent way. And that's the way that the Lord is teaching us. That it is not all up to God and it is not all up to you. It will always take partnership because the kingdom of God is made of systems and every system defines the operation of God in a particular way. There is the administrative and governmental system of the kingdom. There is the economic system of the kingdom. Are we together now? There is the family system of the kingdom. The area I was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and fortunately we are, we are studying the course ministry. And while I was teaching them, I taught them something. I told them, I said, when the devil comes to your life, he finds out which operation of the system you do not understand. That becomes his entrance point in your life. So if Satan comes to your life and finds out that you are a prayerful person, he will not start his attack that way. He finds out that you don't have a problem fasting and praying and studying the word. You have already understood the relevance. Yet, you are not an excellent person. He uses your lapse of lack of excellence as the access point to your life. Are we together now? Jesus said this, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Satan tried to access the life of Jesus through different systems. At first, he tried to terminate him at birth. It didn't happen. He refrained himself. Waited for Jesus when he was tired. He now came trying to use hunger. Turn these stones into bread. It didn't work. He tried to use pride and ego. Are you not the son of God? He shall put his angels charge over you. Even tried to use spirituality. Jesus defeated him and the Bible says he left him for a season. Watch this. He now tried to come through Peter. Are we together? To prohibit Jesus from talking about his death and resurrection. Jesus detected it and rebuked him. Finally, he came through Judas and he was allowed so that scriptures would be fulfilled. Not because Jesus did not know. The Bible says after they took the communion satan entered judas and he went and caused made the arrangement for them to kill jesus christ the systems of the kingdom the area you do not know is the area the devil will defeat you and so i'm opening us up to the multifaceted dimensions of the systems of the kingdom to the end that we will be fortified not just spiritually not just financially not just maritally, there will be complete and balanced growth. Number three, I shared with us last week on how to receive direction and divine strategies. There is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for helping men surmount mountains in their lives. And it's found in Proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 7. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And there's a promise tied to it. It said, if you acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. Right? Then you read verse 7. It says, be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. But the verse of emphasis is verse 6. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. That every time you are confused in your life, which is normal for men, we are human beings, we do not have all the knowledge. There are times you will be faced with mountains that are bigger than you. Listen to me, please. There are times you will be faced with all kinds of mountains, financial mountains, marital mountains, educational mountains, career mountains, spiritual mountains, health mountains. There are all kinds of mountains before you. And Jesus is teaching us how to surmount those mountains. 
He says, every time you get to a point where you are in a crossroad, you are confused, you don't know what to do. He says, forget about the object of your worry and begin to acknowledge him. Flaunt his majesty, remind him of the things he has done before and he's authorized to create a pathway. Number four, the law of mastery and competence. This is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for producing greatness and rewards. The kingdom operates on a reward system. This is one of the fundamental laws of wealth, one of the fundamental laws of relevance, one of the fundamental laws of influence, one of the fundamental laws of greatness, the law of competence. Proverbs 18, 16, it says the gift of a man I told you to write many things as similes of that word gift. The value of a man. The contributions of a man. Are we together? The abilities of a man. When well refined, developed, and deployed. Will make room for him. Will make room for him. Regardless of your background, Koinonia. Regardless of what you know and what you do not know. When you find your giftings. The abilities that God deposited in you and you pay the price to refine them. They will bring you all kinds of rewards. Tangible rewards. What are tangible rewards? Money and all the physical privileges that come. And intangible rewards. The sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that comes knowing that you are revealing the glory of God and that you are using your gifts to serve humanity. It brings fulfillment. But it happens only at the mercy of competence. I'm building tonight right here. When a man finds his God-given ability, Koinonia, please listen to me. I plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention. When a man finds his God-given ability, he has found his way out of mediocrity. He has found his way out of failure. He has found his way out of pain and tears. But your gift in itself, although it came from God, it always comes as a seed. It always comes unrefined. Listen to me. It will take that gift passing through a process of refining of development are we together now and of of mastery in dispensing it to be paid for and to be received and rewarded for nobody is going to bless you just because you think you have been having dreams that god is calling you to be a chef or to be a caterer have you mastered the cooking to an extent that a governor can call you or call your catering company this is the area I have problems with men of God. Because we never challenge people to be at their best. They just bring little prophets offering for us. And we prophesy and we lie to them. Because we know that their gifts the way it is. Someone comes to meet you and says, I want to have a, a construction company. How many years experience do you have? Nothing. Do you have a very credible engineer? No. You are the one who is the CEO of the company. What did you study? You studied fashion how does fashion relate with building stadiums and building bridges you are an entrepreneur do you have the required engineers no but he's my tribe this man and they now bring one million for the man of god and the man of god said go it is done i told you last week it's not done don't let anybody fool you like that favor is when preparedness meets opportunity Favor, hear me, is when preparedness meets opportunity. You want a job, but please and please, before I prophesy to you, have you done your homework? Are we together now? You are trusting God for a job somewhere. Before I speak to you, have you learned people's skills? Have you mastered your art? Do you know your onions? Can you deliver competently? Don't come and ask me to prophesy into your life when you cannot, you have not done your homework. It's a mockery on God. 
So God gives you an opportunity. You have not mastered your cooking. And they now tell you, cook for 300 people. The name of your company is Goodness Catering Services. That it has a spiritual name has nothing to do with the fact that good results will be delivered. You now cook food for the 300 people and you make the person who recommended you to look stupid. He did something to you as a favor because you are his church member, but on your part you could not deliver. Before you start crying for favor, make sure you have something in your hand well enough to deliver. Father, give me a good husband. Have you mastered the art of being a good wife? When was the last book you read? And when was the last time you read it? Are we together? Oh God, give me children. What have you studied about parenting? Or you are just concentrating on trying to make sure your wife takes him. Have you studied on parenting? You see, many times, let me tell you something. Get my teaching, Activating Seasons of Favor. The Lord taught me never to pray necessarily for opportunities. Because time and chance, opportunities and seasons happen to them all. One day, like the hand of a clock, your turn will come. It must come. But the key is to prepare. So that the day you enter the presence of greatness, you will never have to return again. Say amen. Competence. I'd like you to say after me in the name of Jesus. I am gifted. Oh, come on, Koinonia, chorus it. In the name of Jesus. I am gifted. I am anointed. The ability of the Spirit is at work in me. And I cooperate with God by refining those gifts. Knowing this, that a day of favor must come to me. And I do not want to abuse that day. One day in the life of any man, listen. One day in the life of any man, you will be seated before your destiny helpers. It's up to you to deliver to the latter. Are we together? I dread any time in my life when I will stand in the presence of greatness and would not have built capacity that is sufficient enough to open for me a door. I dread the time when Koinonia will be 100,000 members and yet I do not have the leadership capacity to manage those crowds. Do you think God will give you? There are certain people God pegs them at a level because that's the only level that will make them relevant and yet spiritual. Anything outside that is beyond their ability to manage. There are people who can only manage anything less than one million. They have not trained their minds and their lives to be able to manage those kinds of resources. God will not give you hundred million. If you saw it in a dream, wake up. It's a dream. It is your capacity that will make it happen in your life. I, Daniel, understood by books. You must buy the truth and sell it not. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Write it down. Refine your gifts. Don't just identify them. Refine them. They are the keys. They are your bailout. They are your bailout. The concept of something for nothing is wickedness. Hello? Koinonia, listen to me. The concept of something for nothing is wickedness. Everybody rises according to their contribution. Our rewards in life will always be in direct measure to our contribution. To want to become a millionaire, giving the contributions of a pauper is wickedness. That's why thieves are called thieves. That's why we arrest them when we find them. Why? Because they use guns. They don't contribute anything, yet they want your money. Are we together? So they bully you. They say your money or your life. Bill Gates is the way he is today because we can see his contribution. You know why we insult politicians and we call them wicked? They get their money by corruption. We cannot see the value commensurate to what they have. We see a man who 
He's a local government chairman. We do not see any developmental strides. We don't see any entrepreneurial acumen. Yet we see billions in his account. We know that that is questionable. This is the basis upon which people are accused. You don't accuse a man when you can see the value he's providing. If I can provide the value of a billionaire, you should not have a problem with billions in my account. Are we together now? Yes. The question I want to ask you is, that seat of greatness you want, present to me the value that you are offering that authorizes you to sit there. Nothing for many of us. Are we seeing now? A woman once asked me to pray for her. I think she owned a school. And she said things were not working. The students were leaving. And she said a prophet came around to pray. He fed sand. He prayed and told her there's something. Somebody in another school, one other mama that had his neighboring school, that she came and buried a uh, charm in, in the, the madam's own school so that she would not prosper. When the woman told me that thing, I said, Madam, I minister deliverance to people, but I can tell you this is nonsense. That prophet, that, uh, the, 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 the prophet man, I may not call him fake, but I know that he's not seen clearly because most people use wizardry and wizardry peeps. It's in the Bible. He said, we are not like wizards, right? That peep. They peep into the realm of the spirit. There is no accurate knowledge. They summon strange spirits to deliver information for them, which can be aberrated. So he comes and the woman thinks the only reason why her school is not growing well. Why should I send my child to her school? Your school uniform alone depicts non-excellence. You don't know that colors are communicators. Check shirt, check, check, short knicker. That's a school uniform, for instance. And then you put red or blue socks, carelessly done, with one tailor who is not competent, but is a brother to the principal. And so you allow the person to sew anything. You see someone very tall, and his, 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 his trouser is, is just at, around his lap. No excellence. What of the teachers? The te I'm, not, I'm not being insulted, but the teachers themselves, look at the result of the person teaching them accounting. F9 in accounting, F9 in math, F9 in economics, F9 in commerce. He's the chief, he's even the head of department of maybe social sciences. Why? Because they attend the same church. I'm telling you why people fail. There is a place for the spiritual, but never think incompetence will be substituted for um, our competence will be substituted for, for prayer. Now, it is that kind of school. You finish everything. The name is not good. There is no intelligent PTA, uh, parents, teacher forum. They are always fighting. You are increasing the school fees every term, every session, but there is no commensurate development. You write YX, 60 people write junior YX, only five have up to five credits. The students are not so dull. The teachers don't understand what they are doing. It is that kind of school. You write in miracle service and drop it and bring a seed and say, Lord, that school must change. And every time you pray, God tells you, go and meet somebody who has the best school in a city. Usually those kinds of people, they fight those who are doing well because they think they are colleagues. We all have schools. What is, what is the name of your own? You are not delivering. Let me tell you what keeps people incompetent. Don't think because you are doing the same thing another person is doing that that means you are colleagues. Are we together? Yes. There are men of God I see, I know, I honor them with my life. I know that we are all men of God, but I know there are levels and there are standards. I will not sit down and say, oh, this, no, 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 no. Everybody is clapping for Joshua Selman. The same way they are clapping for me, I'm clapping for others too. Are we together now? But this colleague mentality is what keeps people incompetent. You have a supermarket. It brings you one million per day. You have a small kiosk. It brings you maybe 15,000 per day. You now sit down together. We are all wearing suits. We are colleagues. Are you doing the same thing? No. Are you getting the same results? No. But in our arrogance, we say we the entrepreneurs. This guy has a kiosk. This guy has a shopping mall. But that humility to learn there is a saying in Hausa that the person who can ask for road will never get missing. The, 
The keys to make us competent are there. It just takes meekness. But many of us are too embarrassed to improve. We are too ashamed to seek knowledge. Especially because that knowledge we want may come from those who are younger than us, less privileged than us, so we don't submit ourselves to listen. I've been in ministry for 10 years. It's not working. But you say we are still ministry. We are part of PFM. We are part of CAN. A young man comes and in three years he's doing remarkable things. I said, forget about all those small children. He's young. That's why he's attracting his age mates. Have your age mates died? Why don't you attract them? Excuses that are reflectors of our, our lack of desire to move forward. I made up my mind. It's a vow I have made with destiny that in every area where the Lord wants me to excel, I will master it and I will lead the field. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are a preacher here, I'm speaking to you. Don't join people when they are clapping for you and saying, Joshua Selman, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. They are destroying you. Thank God for their applause. But go back and say, it's time to walk. Be committed to personal development. You are a businessman. You hit your first million. You don't cross your leg and say, my soul, find rest. No. You say the journey is just about to start. Thank God for all those things. But I need to learn. Who needs to mentor me? Who needs to build me? Champions are champions because they keep moving. Mediocres are mediocres because they stop moving. Give yourself to continuous improvement. Continuous development. Number five. The fifth law in the kingdom is the ministry of destiny helpers. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. May God bring a helper to your life. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. Please media help us. Mark 2, 1 to 5. I'm teaching you the fifth law that is responsible for producing champions. Giants in the kingdom. Will you open up the gates? gates? Open up the doors. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Again, he entered into Capernaum. Please, let's read this down to verse 5. After some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. This is Jesus now. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now something remarkable happens, verse 3. And they came unto him you, isn't it interesting that the Bible hardly mentions the names of destiny helpers? It just says they, certain men, a certain man, never mentions their names, but mentions what they do. Let me tell you something. Destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers. It says, bringing one who was sick of palsy, which was born of four, that means four people carried him. Four destiny helpers carrying a man. It says, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, what did they do? They uncovered the roof where he was, Jesus now. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, Thy sins be forgiven thee. When you read on, he was eventually healed. Watch this. Write this down. Destiny helpers are people who have been anointed, assigned, and commissioned to bless you and to take you to the next level of your destiny. Anointed, 
assigned by God, commissioned. When Elijah was about to die of hunger in Brook Cherry, the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, go to a city called Zarephath. He said, dear, I have commanded a widow. The widow never, act, she never acted like she was commanded. But God told the prophet, I have commanded. I have compelled her spirit to respond to you. Listen, no matter how hardworking you are, no matter how competent you are, in the dealings of God with men, a time must come in your life when someone else will have to lift you. Please come, Shadrach. Shadrach is right at this level. Everybody, please see. Watch this. Call this a level in life. I am up here standing. His desire is to come up here. Now, he has done well. He's played his part. Well suited. But he has the gift the grace, the anointing, but no access. Are we together now? He needs an introduction of a personality or certain personalities in his life called destiny helpers. Listen to me. The assignment of a destiny helper is to take you from where you are to the next phase of your life. Please, I want you to listen. Because some of us are at this level right now. The truth is you have refined your gift. The truth is you are competent. But you are saying, Lord, where is that man? Where is that woman who must speak? There are three kinds of destiny helpers. Please write this quickly. Three kinds of destiny helpers. Sorry, Shadrach, you have to stand. Okay, go ahead. Let's just write it. Number one. The first kinds of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Divine connectors. Second Kings chapter 5. Divine connectors. Please give us from verse 1 to 5. Second Kings 5 from verse 1 to 5. Learn this. What I'm teaching you is not basic at all. It's not simple at all. It's a deep mystery in the kingdom that produces giants. The first kind of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Who are they? Let me tell you who they are. They are men and women who do not have the physical capacity to lift you. But they can, they have access. They can point you to those who can lift you. They do not have the anointing to heal you. But they can take you to a church where you will be healed. They do not have money to give you. But they can take you to somebody who can help you. They are called divine connectors. Their assignment is to connect you. They don't have the power in themselves to help you. Are we together? But they have access to an information that you need. Here is a situation. A great man called Naaman, the Bible says he was the captain of the host of the king of Syria. Listen. He says he was a great man with his master. An honorable man. Because by him, the Lord had given deliverance to Syria. He says he was also a mighty man in Valium. But there was an area in his life lacking. He was blessed spiritually, blessed maritally, but financially something was still hanging. Are we together? He had excelled in every area, but certain areas were still hanging. And a miracle is about to happen to him. Verse 2. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought... Listen, a way captive out of the land of Israel. Who? A little maid. You see, no name again. No name. Take note of this little girl because she's about to be a destiny connector. It says a little maid and she waited upon Naaman's wife. She was a PA to the big man's wife. One day something happened. Next verse. She said unto her mistress, would God my Lord with the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy. That's a destiny connector. The little girl said, I know I'm a, I'm a captive but while I was in Israel there is a man. I know that that man is powerful. I pray that my being little will not make you to not listen. If you can please talk to your husband that he should go to that prophet I know he will be healed. These are destiny connectors. 
Sam, I know you have this talent, but I was browsing and I saw that there is an international music auditioning. I'm not a musician, but I thought the information may be important for you. Certain men. Destiny connect us. Are we together now? This lady had no power to heal the man, but she knew a prophet. Kai, who knows somebody, who knows somebody, who knows somebody around your life that you have ignored. There is someone who knows who will bless you, but you have ignored them because they do not have capacity in themselves to help you. Let's run through this very quickly. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is in the land there of verse 5. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go and I will send a letter, so on and so forth, and all of that. And when you read down to verse 10, Naaman, on account of, in fact, no, 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 let, let's go to verse, let's go to verse 8. Can we go to verse 8? There's something I want to point out there. Listen. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, because the king was afraid, right? And then Elisha said, let him come now and see whether, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Read on. And so on and so forth, Elisha came. Go to verse 12. Listen. Look at this. He had told him to go and bath in the river of Jordan. Now, historically speaking, Jordan, at the time this man was given an instruction, was not clean. Very dirty. Are we together? So the man felt at my status to go and bath. Watch this. He says, are not all of these rivers, you know, better and all of that? So he returned and went away in rage. This is where I'm trying to go. He was at the point of his breakthrough, but in anger, he was about to miss his miracle. The destiny helper comes again. And, the, and his servants came near and spake to him, listen, and said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee to do something worse, will you not do it? Somebody came and spoke to him. Are we together again? And said, no, no, let me encourage you. And that man went to bath. When you read 14 and 15, he bathed seven times. And his skin, the Bible records, was like that of a child, that of a baby. Destiny connect us. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. That God will give you the sensitivity to see that men may be ordinary, but they carry extraordinary things. Are we together now? They may be your younger ones, they may be children. They may not have the ability to bless you, but I pray that you have the discernment to listen to them when they speak to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The second kinds of destiny helpers are called men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence. Mark chapter 15 verse 43. Please give it to us very fast. Let's, let's be fast about it. Mark 15 verse 43. He says, Joseph of Arimathea, this was Jesus Christ now. Right? We, we shared a bit of this during our prayer and fasting. I'm reiterating it for, so that we can believe. Josh, um, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor. The Bible says, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and used his honor or influence. He went boldly before Pilate and crave for the body of Jesus. Listen, there are men in your life who can use their influence to open doors for you and to endorse you before great men. You need them. A time must come in your life where you will need them. Are we together? Do you know that, please come, assuming this lady is looking for a job, are we together? This lady is looking for a job. She's tried and tried but the privilege God has given me to lead this ministry, we have very influential people scattered around who honor the grace of God in my life and I appreciate it. I can use my influence. Are we together? And meet somebody, someone like our daddy prof and say, daddy, please, there is a lady here, honestly, she can be good for a secretary. I endorse this lady. I know that this lady is good. Daddy, please, do you have any friend that can give her a job? Do you know 
he may not have planned blessing her but because my influence is a middleman between two of them he's compelled by his honor for me to do something about her situation and this girl will get a job are we together god bless you there are men of influence those who preach and say you should not mind men of influence let me tell you what they are telling you remain where you are forever because it will take a joseph of arimathea to speak to the king for you men of influence men of influence i've shared the story here in koinonia true story that a, a guy who wanted to go to nda but there was a height level that he needed to 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 get to and he was short of it maybe by a few inches and they were about to deny him that opportunity and somebody who had connection to the emir of zazel here the emir of of, of, of zaria and all of that um came and met the gentleman and they wrote a letter no he didn't even write a letter he said they should go and tell the commandant of nda that the emir of zazel has added his height come on now that's called influence if the commandant does not act, he knows what that means. <laughs> to his daily bread, to his career. Are we together? Look, let me tell you, influence is a force that moves men to their destiny. Don't you ever make anyone make you criticize influential people. I pray for them in my life. I want them in my life. I desire them in my life. One of the priceless things I learned about my father my father is connected to men of influence almost everywhere if it's police station my father knows somebody in the police station prisons my father knows someone if your car breaks down no matter the brand there is a mechanic somewhere my father knows it's an attribute in his life i covet earnestly are we together who do you know brothers and sisters that can bail you out of this wicked nigeria you can buy land as a born again believer and somebody can just come as a politician to bully you may god raise a man of influence to call him and say if you touch my pastor i touch your job influence you need influence in this life you see the people in the world are smarter than believers we sit down and keep praying in tongues and we fool ourselves you need influence bishop oyedeko is great today i know he's great as an anointed man but it's not just because he's an anointed man he's a pastor of influential people are we together if the managers of five banks are members of your church are we together your chief financial secretary is the is the is the ceo of zenith bank will you be poor as a church please answer me will you be poor as a church don't say it does not matter keep fooling yourself it matters big time in this country we live in you need men of influence many of our parents ignore them that's why they are suffering may god make you a destiny helper to someone that one letter from you to say no no i know this person in the name of jesus christ Amen. i want god to make me a man of influence i am very unapologetic about it I want God to connect me to politicians, to connect me to business people, to connect me to diplomats. I'm not part of those liars in church who will say it doesn't matter. I'm just a righteous man. I have fortified myself. I will still be holy with them and I will take advantage of the influence for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When the former president, I heard a very funny story. I will only say part of it. The former president uh, of Nigeria did something funny to one prominent um, will I call him father elder statesman in Nigeria he did something funny to him and um, within three days he received a call from about five presidents this is verified they all called him and said what are you doing we had you did so and so to this man he made a request you didn't grant it the president himself was trying to call the man to beg him he didn't even pick his call this is verified I'm not just this May God make Koinonia a place of influence. Please answer that amen well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Men of influence. 
the key to strategic kingdom advancement is influence not just evangelism that you are surrounded by men that matter so that somebody will not come with a tractor and bulldoze your church because he thinks he has influence uh -uh. influence gives you a voice the bible says a rich man's wealth is his strength it's, it's a fortification you need men of influence around your life there's too much wickedness who do you know in the army that God can use to speak for you who do you know in the military who do you know in the banking system who has God connected you with in the area of medicine if someone is about to die do you know a, an influential consultant who can facilitate his papers to go to India you need men of influence say I need men of influence open your mouth and pray in one minute send them to my life send them in my life send them in my life Lord, I pray one man of influence can change the story of your generation. One man of influence. Just one. Some of you, that's what brought you to Koinonia. You are saying, oh God, I need a miracle. God is speaking to you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You know, they say when they post you NYSC, once they post you and nobody can walk it before, once NYSC starts, there is no hope of you being redeployed. So they told you, in my presence, I have seen people four months in NYSC, carried away, not marriage, not pregnancy. Somebody used his influence and said, I need this person for his personal comfort to be in an area. It was quietly done. In Ebu, you call it third list. But there are many lists. According to what influence can bring. Are we together? There are people whose admission letters are printed overnight. Jammed irrespective. Come on now. Cut off point nonsense. A voice is the cut off point. Influence. And God brings them. If you do not have men of influence, you will join the queue in life. And the queue does not move. That's the sad thing about the queue in life. There are too many greedy people in front of you who will not allow the queue move. Even when they have it, they won't give you chance. They will stay there till they die. So the hope of you moving to your place of destiny will be impossible. How many look at redeemed and living faith in every city in every place they have land. Do you know there are territories that antagonize Christians? They will not give you land, but they had influence. They spoke to one allergy who knows what their prayer did for him and said, you better talk to your local government chairman to give us land. And they said, please, give my pastor land as an allergy, as much as he wants. That's what influence can do. May God give you influence. In the name of Jesus. There are many churches in Zaria who want to buy large properties. There are, there are lands around, but they may never give churches. They may never give certain people because they say, one, somebody holds it. No, 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 no. You watch what will happen in the name of Jesus with Koinonia. Let me tell you, everybody on earth is a tenant. Nobody has a right to bully anybody for land. God will give us land that will shock you. It will be as if they brought it from heaven and just say, pick. It will happen by the Spirit. I'm not one of those fearful people who will not move. The earth is the Lord's. But you see, it's not just the voice of heaven from uh, the voice of God from heaven. God will connect you to somebody. I have prayed for many unbelievers, and I'm happy about it because they will remember my prayer the day I need their help. I prayed for them. If God gives them breakthrough, tomorrow we'll say, please, we need your influence to buy. 10 hectares of land for koinonia and they will say let it be done if they refuse the man will buy it in his name and sell it to us influence our parents rejected men of influence now they are paying for everything just to give somebody admission in secondary school see how we fast and pray whereas one signature can answer that prayer i pray for you from the depth of my heart any man who needs to enter your life who has the influence you require may the God that I serve bring them into your life
May the God that I serve bring them into your life. Please hear me. Every man on earth answers yes sir to someone. Are we together? If they refuse to tell you, go ahead. Find who they answer yes sir to. And they will answer yes sir to you too. He said, for I am a man under authority. I am under authority. So there are others under my authority. There is no man who is, no matter how people make themselves gods, don't be threatened by men's noise. They only talk. Every animal claims to be the king of the jungle until the lion shows up. When the lion shows up, he doesn't say keep quiet. They will be silent. Whoever has robbed your family of what is their due, whoever has closed the door for you, there are many of us, your qualification can give you a job, but the people endorsing you are like you, so their words are not heard. May God bring a, a man whose signature matters in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no nonsense like a door that is closed. It's a mirage. Someone can open that door. I've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy people. I've had the privilege of meeting very influential people. And I have seen the way doors open just like that. I've seen doors open just like that. I remember one time, one of our chairman, um, the chairman board of trustees of this ministry, is a general in the army. I remember when he was a colonel, sometime in Lagos, you know, we are so close and every time from the airport, he would send the military people with the car, his car, and then with military bikes. Nobody does any checking. As soon as they are coming, they just flash light and they salute them. Access because of influence. Who told you driver's license takes three months? It is the general thing. When my international passport expired, the general himself, he drove me, sir, with his car. We went to passport office in Abuja, in Kaduna. I even did the first one in Abuja. So it was even complicated. In 30 minutes, how many minutes? About 30 minutes or so, they brought out my passport for me. And I was ready to go. The woman who did it, the madam there, Last year, I went to minister in Nigerian immigration, their fellowship, their chapel. When I went there, there was a woman. They had moved her there, and quickly I made friends with her because my passport would expire again. <laughs> Keep laughing at me. Don't lend the wisdom in what I'm saying. Listen, when you see men of influence, don't resent them. You resent them because pastors have taught you. They are all unbelievers. Don't mind them. Mind them. Mind them. Just make sure their influence does not destroy you. But please mind them. Don't have that mindset of throwing men of influence and think every gate will open to you just like that. But the greatest key is to become an influence yourself. When you become an influence, you become a magnet to influential people. Oh, that's why I love the anointing. Goodness 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 the anointing will bail you out it will make you an influence you will not just look for men of influence they will come to you the bible calls them gentiles it calls their kings he said they will come to the brightness of your rising the last kind of destiny helpers are faithful men faithful men men who will stay with you in the thick and thin 90% of the people you will ever meet in your life don't like you. They come to you simply because of your gift and what you represent. You will hardly find people who love you for who you are. But in your life, there are men you will find who love you for who you are. They will stay with you. For time's sake, first, first Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. Please, let's hurry up. First Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. You reign, you reign. Hello, King, you reign. You reign, you reign. Hello, King, you reign. You reign, you reign. Hello, King, you reign. Yeah, na 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 na. Yeah, na 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 na. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Hallelujah. David therefore departed thence. David was running away from Saul. Saul was about to kill David because he was termed a rebel. Are we together? Now David ran. And the Bible says he escaped to a cave, not a palace, a cave called Adullam. But the Bible says, and when his brethren and all his father's house had, they did what? They followed him to that cave. There are men that can follow you even when you are in the cave. May God bring them to your life. Let me tell you something. Listen, one of the most disastrous things for a leader is to not find men who believe in you when things are not going well. They leave you alone when you are lonely. But there are certain destiny helpers called faithful men. Are we together? Faithful men. He said a friend is made for adversity. There are many of us when you go through bad things, there's nobody to stand there with you. When everything works well, everybody comes. But there are a kind of destiny helpers called faithful men. Verse 2. And everyone that was in distress, one that was in debt, everyone who was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became what? Captain over them in a cave. How do you submit to a man who is a failure? How do you submit to a ministry that does not have results? How do you remain loyal to a business that is not working? It's called faithfulness. There are such men. There are such men. We were discussing the other day with Ejimi about a particular man of God who had gone through rough times in his life and nothing had changed about his ministry. Not one person we know of influence had left the ministry because of what happened. And I said they are called faithful men. They are not called men of God. They are not called assistants. They are called faithful men. May God position them in your life. How many great men in this country have fallen and they are left alone? There are some of us, when our parents were wealthy, there were all kinds of relatives. Now, right now, there's nobody to even pay your school fees because there are no faithful men. There are psychophants around in our world. But there are people called faithful men. The Bible says that he was captain over them and they were with him in a cave. 400 people in a cave. There was no hope. It's not like they were there hoping things would change. They were saying, if we die, Let's die with you. If you are a leader here, please let me give you a secret. Every time you pray, don't just pray for gifted people. Pray for faithful men. A faithful man is better than a gifted man. A gifted rebel is not an asset. Hallelujah. Verse 3, and then we'll stop. And David went thence to the... Okay, let's just stop there. I'm not going to read... Let me give you the next verse to read. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. That will tell you the whole story all till. But, but then we are looking at something else. First Chronicles 12. Let's read 1 to 3, then move to verse 38. First Chronicles 12, 1 to 3, then 38. Let me show you something very powerful about these faithful men. Look at this. He said, now these are the men that came to David in, Zig in Ziklag. I'm fast forwarding now. He says, while he kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish, he said they were among the mighty men. What did he call them? Helpers of the war. So they had stayed with him even when he had now become mighty and was ready to fight. He trained them. They remained there. They had now become helpers of the war. And it lists all of them. Go to verse 38 for time's sake. Read with me, please, everybody. Hallelujah. All these men of war that could keep rank. Do you know what that? Hold on. That means when David told them, you stand as a musician, they remained as a musician because David said it. Absolute loyalty regardless of results. Are we together? He says they came with what? A perfect heart. Nobody was doing eye service. They loved him genuinely. They were willing to die for him genuinely. He said to make David king, their determination, they said, David, you don't need to bribe us. We, we are alive to make sure the word of the Lord in your life will come to pass. Do you know God can send these men with you? 
everything in your life can nose dive and they will come and say Jimmy if everyone will leave you I will be here for you whether your wife gets pregnant or not I am here for you how many pastors are hiding many things in their lives because if members know they will run away because they are selfish people but there is a grace I truly believe there is a grace that attracts faithful men to the life of a man watch the kinds of people you are attracting and don't be too quick to say these people are my friends we even say they are my right hand men a friend is made for adversity adversity separates people you will be shocked to see how many people will call you king of the jews and crucify you tomorrow but this guy said they were with a perfect heart to make sure a jimmy becomes that ceo with a perfect heart to make sure that Abiodun gets to that place of destiny. So even if they would die in the process, no problem. There are such men. Listen, he said, and all the rest also in Israel were of one heart to make David king. They threw away their own personal agenda and said, David, for as long as you are not king, we will not rest. Do you have such people in your life who will take responsibility and say for as long as you have not gotten that federal government job, I will not rest. You can call and say, Kai uncle, you have tried. Don't worry, God is faithful. He said, God is faithful. I take it as a ministry to make sure you become gainfully employed. And they will run left, right, and center. While you are sleeping, they are awake. They are saying, help my son. When they captured Reverend Ntia, Ntia is in Akwaibo, Ibom Uyo. When they captured him, Dr. Paul Enencha said he could not sleep. Because it's not just because he was his spiritual son. He said no, he began to engage certain forces and he started making calls all around. Called his spiritual parents. Oyedeko, they called Adeboye, called federal government people and called people and said, you better look for those assassins and release Ntia, Ntia right now. Dr. Paul Enenche went himself to Akwaibom and went to prophesy on that soil and say, I command that my son be released. Faithful man. Is it not enough to pray from your house? When a man leaves his house to your own to help you, it's no longer just friendship. It's called faithfulness. Pray in one minute. Lord, bring faithful men. I'm tired of false people in my life. Take what I'm saying seriously. I'm teaching you mysteries that will make your life flawless. Faithful men. Faithful men. Even when they know what you have done, they say it will never change my relationship with you. Pray. There are businessmen who crash just with one scandal because everybody around them is a psychophant. There are pastors who crash with just one rumor because there are no faithful men. It's a terrible thing to live your life building men to and then realizing that they are not faithful. Make sure you are praying. Shabakalabako Sotobai. Lord, bring faithful men to my life. Shimbra Kabarato Sopalaba. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus had a crowd just like Koinonia. He was teaching them. They were there for different reasons. One time, he taught a message that was too hot for them. The Bible said they started leaving. There were only certain people, his disciples that stayed. And he asked them a question. He said, will you not also leave? And then Peter, Ayah. he said, to whom shall we go? Don't you know we are sold out? To whom shall we go? He said, you alone have the word of life. And when they were crucifying Peter, Theologically, historically, they kept Peter and were about to nail him. And Peter said, I have one request. I know I will die, but I'm, I'm not worthy to die in the same position with Jesus. Turn me upside down and let me die. Faithfulness unto death. I'd like you to pray, especially those of us who are trusting God for marriage. By the time all you have in your life is a man who just wants you because of figure eight, you are in trouble. By the time you have a woman who just likes you because you have money or you are working in shell, you are in trouble. Lift your voice and say, faithful men. Faithful men. Faithful men. Pray. Pray. 
Faithful men, faithful men, anointed to stay with your vision, anointed to stay with your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many people who pray for me. The prayer department prays for me. My parents pray for me. But there is a woman. You have never seen the woman. I met this woman in a meeting. And the woman said she had a revelation. When she listened to my message, she said, I have entered a covenant with God. She said, I'm an intercessor. I have entered a covenant with God that until I go to heaven, I am an intercessor for you and your ministry. God is, I've never given this woman one naira. God is my witness. You can ask the protocol and all those who follow me. They don't even know the woman. I have never given her one naira. Once in a while, she will just send me text and say, my son, just know your mother is praying for you. I tell you, there are times I'll be trusting God, all decisions and her text just comes. Faithful people. They will never ask for money. They will never ask and say, when you get there, it's chop by chop. They, they, they see it as a ministry to make sure you prosper. I've seen people like that. With all humility and by the grace of God, one of such people is our daddy here. I remember when um, there was a time that, you know, we're looking for a venue for ministry and all of that. Do you know daddy took the responsibility single-handedly there are still people here they they would ask about koinonia as if it's even their ministry it's like they are more concerned about it than me i sent a text to a few people telling them we're trusting god to buy land you know to, to to get land and all of that and one of the women sent and said i've been waiting for this she said i've been waiting for this make sure when it starts my contribution comes in. She said, I will be offended if my money is not part of the money that is used to buy land. Faithful men. A pastor may have nothing but faithful men. And I tell you, he has more than assets. He may not be able to play the keyboard well, but he's faithful. He will die with you. Are we together? There are people who were once in this ministry. Today they have left. Some of them are abroad. They are the ones spreading koinonia messages around. I don't know them but they take those messages all around it's an anointing that is upon this ministry faithfulness i tell you we don't force people to do anything here there is a grace i saw it in certain ministries i pursued it like a man pursues water when i found it i got it and i knew many of us have too many disloyal people in our lives you are not sure of anybody close to you they will laugh with you now and when they turn, they can say, crucify him. Let me tell you, no matter how careful you are, you cannot make men faithful by yourself. It would take a heart under God for them to vow and say, I love this man. I am loyal to him to death. There are people today, if they bring a gun to shoot, they will stand and receive that shooting for me. I know that. Not everybody, but there are people. You need that in your life. Because you are dear Facebooking people chatting with people and saying you are my best friend you are my best this they will leave you let me tell you something when the going gets tough because in every man's life there are valleys there are times of challenge how many wives left their husbands simply because for one year there was no money they packed their load and went how many husbands left their wives and started looking for another small girl simply because after five years she could not give them a child faithfulness is important don't think i'm joking when, when we're saying this please i want you to pray again and say lord in my life send faithful men i told you they are anointed they are commissioned they are anointed they are commissioned they don't just come they are sent Send faithful men. Send faithful men. Hallelujah. 
Number six, please sit down. We're rounding up. The last key that controls undeniable results and impact in the kingdom. This is probably the greatest of the laws that I know. It's called the law of honor. Pay attention. Somebody's life is about to change. The law of honor. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. There is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results in the kingdom. Listen, I'm establishing the law of honor. The law of honor is predicated upon a revelation that there is an anointing. Hear me. There is a grace for every dimension in the kingdom. Results do not just happen. There are graces that activate possibilities. There is a kind of grace that brings influence. There is a kind of grace that brings wealth. There is a kind of grace that brings freshness. Are we together now? So that's the first thing you need to know about the law of honor. That there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results. How you know there is a grace working is when the result becomes consistent regardless of the opposing situations. When a result becomes consistent, there is a law and a grace at work. Number two, human beings are God's reservoirs of spiritual anointings, spiritual graces. God keeps his anointings in men not in jars not in goya oil they can just be prophetic contacts but god's instruments god's instrument for hosting his anointing listen he that received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what look up did he say shall receive god's reward there is something called a prophet reward. It's the reward that goes with his office. Are we together? It is the possibility he can release to you in honor of the God he serves and the office he represents. And it does not just mean a man of God. It's a law. Every time you see a man walking in a dimension consistently, regardless of opposing forces, there is a grace making that. I have seen people in my life they are not very wealthy but they never beg i don't know what kind of grace that is the moment supplies are about to finish something else comes they never have one billion but they never lack if they need to travel abroad someone pays for the visa i've seen these people very strange people they kneel down and say lord send help from zion and men are rushing. They will not bring one billion. They don't have 20 cars. They may just have one or two cars. But you will come to their house. You will never beg for bread. It's a grace. Are we together? When you see a ministry exploding in membership, there is a grace. When you see people moving from one dimension to the other, there is a grace. You can see a lady who may not even represent what supposedly most ladies may think brothers want in sisters. Yet you find 10, 12, 15 brothers flocking around and everybody saying this and that. She can say, no, I'm in a relationship. You say, close that one and, and come to me. I'm, I'm ready to whatever it takes. And you are wondering, come, my brother, is it that, is it that this lady is gold? He says, me too, I don't know. It's a grace. Are we together? That lady will leave that ministry and go to another one where nobody knows her and the result becomes the same. There are people, when they ask you something, you can't say no. You, you swear heaven and hell and say, this is the last time I'll give anybody this, this lantern. They just knock and say, Ejimi, please, can you help me with it? You stand up like a zombie and pick it. There is a grace. There is a grace. I have seen this. There is a grace that brings the healing anointing in a ministry. It's not just by faith. 
there are people who have these graces. Now listen to me please. Your life revolves around the levels of the possibilities you have activated. I wish what I were saying were a lie. I would have quietly apologized and just sat down. But this is true. It has changed my life. It is changing my life. It has changed this ministry. It is changing this ministry. The law of honor is the cheapest route to greatness. The law of honor. I used to think service was the cheapest route until I learned the law of honor. My goodness. You can quantum leap your destiny in one day. You can veto imperfections in your life by practicing the law of honor. It has worked in my life like a charm. The Bible says, He that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He that receives a fruitful woman in the name of a fruitful woman shall receive what? A fruitful woman's reward. He that receives a millionaire in the name of a millionaire will receive a millionaire's reward. The keys that made him what he is. Listen. You can, men are dimensional. That you are close to a man does not mean you have exhausted his dimensions. There is Joshua Selman, the human being. There is Joshua Selman, the friend. There is Joshua Selman, the man of God. Are we together? There is Joshua Selman, the businessman. There is Joshua Selman, the whatever it is. There is a dimension you have not seen. If you only know me as a man of God, you receive that reward. If I become your friend, you will have access to certain things that people will not have. Are we together? If you come to see me in the capacity of a man of God, you can sit down. I will open my fridge and serve you because you are coming as a man of God. But if you come as my friend, when a Jimmy comes to see me, whatever I'm eating is what he will just pick it and keep eating. He, has, he is not going to ask me. We will even talk about it. He wants more. He can open the fridge and carry it and we'll take. Are we together? Because we are friends. Are we together? But when we begin to talk, we align to the relevant dimensions that reflect the graces we carry. When I'm talking to my parents, we can crack jokes, but when I'm about to say something serious, I switch. Because I'm talking to men who brought me to this world. They have an anointing to speak over my life. Are we together? You can see me greet our daddy and just crack jokes. But when I'm about to talk to him, I talk to him in the capacity of the grace he carries. Are we together now? That's why you see us do certain things like some of our elderly ones. We don't let them just join the queue. They sit down. These things are communications of honor. That's why we provide buses for you after the service. It's not just that we have money to throw around. No. It is to honor you. It's a law of honor. Because it is our belief in this ministry that everybody seated is carrying an anointing. And most of those anointings, we need it. And so we honor you to receive it. Are we together now? Yes. You want a car, you see somebody who has a car, you buy fuel. You are receiving him in the name of a car owner. You will get a car owner's reward. You see someone in a relationship, you don't keep gossiping about his relationship. You package a seed and sow into his life and sow into that lady's life and say, whatever made you get this good man, whatever made you get this good woman, you got this woman when you were not born again, meaning it was not your effort. This is grace. I need it. You sow into that life. You are working. Someone is not working. And you are saying, is it teacher that I'll sow into? You see? So you never rise. One day you get up in the morning and wash the person's clothes and iron the clothes. And he gets up and says, ah, my roommate, what is this for? He said, I didn't iron it as roommate. I'm tired of joblessness. I'm tapping into the grace. That frequency in the spirit that afforded you opportunity. Out of the millions of jobless people, you got a job. How many barren people have honored those who have children? They will criticize them. Hallelujah. An anointing you have dishonored has run away from your life. 
an anointing you have refused to bring into your life through honor may be the reason why you are grounded hear me i'm rounding up you saw a prayer grace in koinonia and you felt please these guys just pray too loud they just shout like idiots i like the excellence i like the word but the prayer and so you find out that you pray for five minutes and snore your life away because you ignore that grace it's called the spirit of prayer and supplication you saw grace for an accurate understanding of the word and you criticize it that's why those who criticize great men never become great you see why our parents are sincere but the way they are they criticize every preacher on tv they criticize every actor they criticize every government worker when they watch news everything is criticism they insult everybody who have you insulted to your detriment whose anointing have you resented let me tell you the key to activating the law of honor number one you must believe in god number two you must believe in the vessel who is the carrier of that anointing you must not just believe in the person you must believe in the office the operation of that anointing i i pray for you that you get this we're about to pray but you need to get this for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life. Everlasting, I will reverence you, Lord. Listen, I have followed men and women who have carried on common graces, not just in ministry. I have, I have, I have honored them with my life. I saw into different TV ministries because Koinonia will soon have their own TV ministry. I never open my mouth and criticize anybody's TV ministry because somebody is going to be watching our own soon. So I plant a seed of honor. Are we together now? Yeah. I sow into the lives of people's children because I'm planting a seed of honor for my own children. I don't want my children begging for school fees, begging for bread. So I take care of other people's children. That's why I don't kick children and throw them out here. I take care of them. Let me tell you something. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, without fail, except for the mercy of God, he will receive it. We have criticized people. You have not started ministry, yet every man of God does not have rema for you. You are in for a shock. In for a big shock. You have not started business. Yet you look and say, Kai, this guy, he's talking, talking, talking. It's as if he's by luck, except he built this company. Continue talking. No reverence for people's sacrifices. Let me tell you something. Behind every glory, there is a story. If you do not respect the story and the glory, you will never replicate it in your life. Never, ever. Never, ever. There are people by the grace of God who I have never met eyeball to eyeball. I've heard about them. They have reproduced the grace upon my life verbatim. Every anointing you see is yours for the taking. But the key is honor. Honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands. Let me tell you something. Honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands. You have heard that there is a favor anointing in this ministry. I don't know whether you believe it or not. There are many people who never believe it. So you will sit down with circles of disfavor. Whereas people are recording unending testimonies of the hand of God. By the grace of God, everything we do in this ministry prospers. It's a grace. Have you tapped into it? Is it working for you? Listen, as a faithful person in this ministry, you should be a reflection, 
an epistle of the graces and the anointings that are here. Don't let people come from somewhere. You see how people behave when they come from other places. Their hearts are open. They are not distracted because they are coming only for a few hours or a few days and going back. But many people just sit down. Koinonia, koinonia. And they enjoy. And after the grace, they stand up and walk away. Proximity to an anointing does not release it upon your life. It takes honor. Honor is the spiritual magnet that brings graces to people. Me and Ejimi were watching a man of God one time. And I looked at this man of God. I said, Ty, this guy carries an uncommon grace for wealth. An uncommon grace. He's not so fluent. He's not even so intelligent. You know that there are many business principles this guy does not know. But there is, there is an uncommon grace. This guy had 10 cars in 10 weeks. One, one every week. Uncommon grace. And we said, no, this guy knows what he's saying. I will not criticize such a man. I will listen with my heart open. I can ignore his imperfections and get what I need. Listen, anointings do not flow through perfect vessels. Joshua Selman is not a perfect vessel. If you are waiting for perfection, you may never enter certain levels of grace. Ignore the imperfections and get the anointing. We are going to pray. <laughs> Hebrews 7 verse 7. Shabala katabala I will reverence you. I will reverence you. There are things that were not in my life before. I know they were not there. I knew when they came. I honored my way through them. Honor is not human worship. Honor is not even giving somebody offering. It's just a communication. The honor is a recognition and a celebration of the hand of God and the sacrifice of that person in the secret and in the open. There are men of God I will never talk against in secret and in the open. It doesn't mean I agree with everything they do. Honestly, I don't. However, I honor them with my life. I'm not ashamed to declare that they are custodians of certain levels of grace. We have resented people. Little results in our lives. But we are very quick to resent people. You see a lady getting married and you look and say, Ah, and she's not fine. No, Kai, the way God does his thing, Seth. See? That's what your eyes could see. What you just said in the realm of the spirit is I dissociate myself from this experience. That's what you have said. Every time you communicate dishonor, that's what you say. Lord, I dissociate myself from this experience. We are going to pray. Six laws I have given you. You will play them like a computer game and watch your life skyrocket. You will, you will tame life like a chess. You know how people play chess. Life is not magic. It's not chance. As haphazard as it is, there is a synergy. There is a rhythm to life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you see everything I've been saying. It's one thing to hear what I'm saying. But it's another thing to see it. He says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set myself upon the tower. Right? He said, and I will see what the Lord will say to me. Some of these things I share with you freely. I got them from my own mistakes. I got them through pain. I got them through sacrifice. But they are irrefutable laws. Bring any man for me. Walk these laws. And watch Satan bow. Watch gates open by themselves. I don't care whether it's gates of finances. I don't care whether it's gates of health. I don't care whether it's gates of ministry. Gates of business. There is nothing you are doing that has not been done before. Ask those who master this key. If he's setting up a company, you are not the first to do it. If it's marriage, you are not the first to do it. If it's barrenness, you are not the first to be barren. The day your light comes, that becomes your day of salvation. Something I have ignored. I used to do a lot of things and allow people punish me. There was a man of God that set me free. Just one revelation from him. I could go and borrow money 
and come and help somebody to be careless and run into debt at the expense of the carelessness of someone because I felt I had to be everything to everybody. And one day, one man of God delivered me. His name is Dr. Mike Modok. Just one statement. He said, never do to people what only God can do to them. Ah, that was it. That was my deliverance. I found out that I was becoming God to many people. So I was taking God's responsibility in the lives of so many people. And it was killing me. And I said, no, rather than being God, let me start leading men to God. And he gave me freedom. There are some of us who are always paying bills for people who are not serious. You give them 20,000, they go and destroy it. You give them 100,000 for a business, they throw it. And you keep doing that. It's running the finances of your home. You are being God to them. Lead them to God. Teach them the principles. Give them access to responsibility. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Hallelujah. We're just going to have three prayer points. I'm going to give us the next five minutes. I'd like you to blast in tongues. We're going to pray. The secrets of the kingdom. Like Bishop Oyedeko will say, that has been responsible for producing stars in the kingdom. Life is not guesswork. Stop guessing. Koinonia, stop guessing. You can walk circumspectly by knowledge. By knowledge. By knowledge. Lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Pray. Pray your ignorance away. Pray your doubts away. Shibara paska la bariara balaraba. Mambra takarato soto bresh. E karaba baba barada balada balada bash. Rababa bakata la barada balada. Ay 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 ay. Shabara teka la barato sota. Pray your way to the realm of uncommon exploit. Pray your way to the realm of enviable greatness. Pray your way. Pray the secrets of the kingdom. Pray the secrets of the kingdom. Pray the secrets of the kingdom. shield for me you're my glory you're the lifter up of my head only thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory you're the lifter up of my head but thou A shield for me, you're my glory, you're the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, you're my glory, you're the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. I'm challenging you to make decisions that will keep you consistent. Number one, avoid complaint. Nothing slows down consistency. Nothing produces inconsistency as a life full of bitterness and complaint and grumbling. Let me tell you something. Murmuring is sin. Murmuring is not just wrong. Write it down. Murmuring is sin. You find out from scripture how people perished for murmuring. The Bible says they limited the Holy One by murmuring. Complaining. Lord, you should have done this. Lord, you should have done this. And make a decision under God. Advise yourself that I need to be consistent. 
and I will never find myself murmuring and complaining again. That does not mean everything will be a bed of roses, I tell you. Challenges will come. But you must make up your mind. Make up your mind that you will not murmur. Number two, thanksgiving, I told us. That's the second decision that will make you consistent in life. Thanksgiving. Whether you have a reason to be thankful or not, find a reason. One of our dear ladies in Lagos, we were at their house yesterday to visit with the family. And um, I think I've shared the story. She may even be following online right now. This lady, about three years ago, during her birthday, her friends just poured, um, I can't remember what they poured now, caustic soda. And the lady became blind on her birthday. Her friends, careless friends rejoicing without sense, poured caustic soda. And now the lady for three, four years now is blind. But let me tell you, I've not seen a human being happier than that lady till yesterday. I promised her that the next time we were in Lagos, we would visit her. We were so tired yesterday, but I made up my mind to visit with the family. And when we got there, she was blind. When she felt my hand, she was shouting, ah, Apostle, she was so happy. They were the first people to give me a birthday gift. Lovely father, lovely mother, lovely everyone, and the lady was so happy, joyful. Never for once did she tell me, Apostle, but will my eyes open? It seemed as though it was not even her business. She was talking to me that she was going abroad because she was in 300 level when she went blind. So nothing for schooling again. She was saying, Apostle, I want to go abroad and study psychology and counseling. And we're laughing. That's a blind person. A blind lady who would have planned to be married maybe by now. Supposedly her destiny shattered. Is it not when your eyes is open that you can see money to collect? Very happy lady. She challenged me sincerely. I thought about that experience even while we came today. I said, my goodness. That means your circumstances do not have to determine the extent of your joy, your gratitude. You can choose to respond instead of reacting. Oh, this is unfavorable, but God is still faithful. And Lord, I thank you. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you thank God, you frustrate Satan. Thank you, Jesus. I thought my, my pension will come. It's five years now. But I thank you. You are still faithful. I thought we'll be able to complete the house in 2014. But till now, we've not even lifted it to lintel level. But I thank you that I have a land. I may not have a structure on it. In one minute, can you find everything God has done in your life and tell him thank you? Forget about what he has not done. If you do not have anything, you are a liar. Go ahead, mention them. Go ahead and mention them. Lord, you are faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for life, for strength, for help. Tell him thank you. I may not have a house, but I am sane enough to even think of sleeping. Are you grateful, Koinonia? Those outside, for some of you, this is your miracle. As you are thanking God, you will find out that that sickness is no more there. It responds to gratitude. Lord, I may not have money, but thank you, I have an account that is ready to receive your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Decision number three that will help you become consistent and persistent is to walk in love. 
Walk in love. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Once there is no love in your heart, you just punctured the tank of your destiny. Get set for an empty tank. The moment there is no love, it's better that you do not have faith. It's better that you do not have faith, I guarantee you. When all else fail in your life, make sure your love does not fail. Love. The antidote to offense. You will find men and women who will be sarcastic. They will say things. Ah, are you aware that that woman is barren? In case they've not told you, know it now. It's been eight years. All the children you see in a house are adopted. When you hear such a news, it can break your spirit. What if your own friends let you down? What if those you trust, you committed secrets to them about your life and they dashed it on the floor? Let me tell you something. The Bible says, blessed are you when you are not offended. There are a thousand and one reasons to be offended. Believe me when I tell you I have no offense in my life. There is no man on earth that is in any blacklist. I don't even have it. I'm a happy person. Every list is white. Vision and fulfillment. No blacklist. Now, as a leader, you can imagine how people treat you every day. From waking up to all kinds of things. On the road, someone wants to jam you. And then he's insulting you again. And you now turn and tell him, your father or your mother. Or whatever it is that you want to use. And then you quickly remember that, ah, there's miracle service today. <laughs> Are we together? People can be so foolish, they can annoy you. People can be so careless, they can annoy you. Your loved ones can be so insensitive. But you must make up your mind today that you will walk in love. Walk in love and watch how cheap Satan is. Watch how the mountains before you will melt like wax. It says love never fails. Everybody repeat it after me. In Nigeria where we are looking for insurance and guarantee, I give you one. Are we together? Many insurance companies will come and say, come and work with us. Do business with us. We are 150 years old. We can insure you. We can insure your life and your car. I found something in life that does not fail. Greater than potentials. Love. Never. Not love can fail and then readjust itself. Love never fails. I give you the fail proof. The fail proof key to living. Walk in love. Genuinely and passionately make room for love in your heart towards people you don't like, towards people who insult you. Make up your mind that forever the love of God has consumed me. And you will see how the anointing will multiply in your life. You will see how God will. Let me tell you, I have used this in my life. God has used love to turn mountains what my faith could not do, my love did for me. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Sing majesty. Majesty. Sing majesty. Majesty. Forever we are changed. Forever we are changed by your love. We're in, in the, the presence, presence of your majesty. I'd like you to pray for yourself in one minute and say, Lord, take away bitterness from my heart. That, 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 that spirit of bitterness and anger that rejoices when I'm afflicting pain at others. Oh, apostle, you don't know what they did to me. I don't care. I don't care what happened to you. 
Walking in love is a choice. Walking in love is a choice. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. You can choose to walk in love. I will never forget, forgive that woman till Jesus comes. Then you are not ready to see the power of God in your life. The third decision that can make you consistent is to walk in love. Anytime, every time, at all times. Hallelujah. Never allow yourself to be a victim of communicating lack of love. I hate this person. Are you aware that I hate Pastor Alpha? Are you aware that I hate Mama? I'm just keeping quiet. The day his cup will be full. See, let me tell you, those who talk like that never go far. Don't you ever think you will compromise on the law of love and get miracles. Only herbalists give miracles without love. The, the initiator of miracles is love. He was moved with compassion. He saw them as sheep without shepherd. Although they were insulting him, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Love. Love. The last decision that will help you become consistent. Are you ready? Is vision. Vision. The Bible says without vision the people perish. The word perish was not accurately translated. The word there is to cast off restraint. In other words, to veer off from a path. Vision. And nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophecy that backs it. Nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophetic word that came with that vision. I may not remember what I said, but God told me. I remember. God told me I would build that house. I remember what he told me in 200 level that I will be a PhD holder. God told me prophecy is powerful. It keeps men consistent. The moment you are about to gas out, a prophetic word comes. And God says, what did I tell you before you got married? Did I not tell you after four years I will lift you? You are just in the third year. Don't give up. My word still stands and it supplies strength and you can fire up. What did I tell you before you would start that business? I told you that I will lift you. And so you stand. Many of us forget the prophetic words upon our lives. We trivialize it. Now I know that we live in a generation where everybody is a prophet. Somebody just sees you and says something that is not worth remembering. But I tell you, when you hear something that is of God, there are things God has spoken about in my life. I even forgot them. When they happened, I went back. I had to go back and check my notes. And said, my God, you said this. You said this. The first time God spoke to me about Koinonia was 2005. I wrote it down, but I didn't pay attention. So when God spoke to me about starting it, I think it was last year or so. I was going through all of my notes during my retreat and I saw it there. I said, my goodness. When God speaks, hear me, he is worth believing. Whether you have any evidence or not, just believe him foolishly. God, you said by December I will own a house. This is June. There is no land available. I have 5,000 in my account home and abroad. And God says, so what? I never told you you will buy the house. I said you will have a house. There are many ways to have a house. It can be given. Someone can lack his sleep and God says this is the man to bless. You know, many of us don't believe God can move in these dimensions. I believe him. Absolutely. I believe him. Are we together? I believe God with all my heart because I know he is faithful. There are things he has said to us as a ministry. There are things he has said to me as a person. 
I have watched one by one. One by one. And there are many more that will come to pass. I want to ask you a question. What has God said concerning your life? What prophecy has come upon you? As a family of faith, God declared unto us that this is our year of what? Multiplied grace and influence. God saw fuel crisis when he made that statement. God saw the dollar nose diving, the naira nose diving when he made that statement. It's up to you to remain consistent or join those who are making noise and perish with them. God's obsession is to be trusted. He wants to be trusted. Are we together? If he said it, I believe it. If it does not work, at least I won't die. But I know that I believe him. Do you believe God? Let me tell you something. There is nothing God will tell you that looks possible. If God tells you something that looks possible, you didn't hear him. Because God speaks from his realm. He will never tell you what is possible. Your brain and your job can tell you, save to 200,000. In five months, you have one million. Go and buy Toyota Camry. That's your brain. But God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness. And he said, God, how? The how is none of your business. Here's how the Bible puts it. He said, just as you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child. So also you do not know the way of the Lord. God works in mysterious ways. Are we together? Somebody called me. He's getting married next month. And he said they did the budget. They, they updated it and it was 2.7. I said, how much do you have? And he said he has 40,000. And I said, don't, don't laugh. I'm, uh, listen. He's not an irresponsible person, I can tell you this. It's just that he, he's in a situation right now and he needs a miracle. And he said, man of God, will this thing come to pass? I said, you even have 40,000 and you are complaining. Ask those who had only five loaf and two fish and were about to feed 5,000 people immediately. Time was not given. Immediately, five loaf. I love Jesus. What a man that inspires me. Five loaves and two fishes. And he said, ask them to sit down. If you don't believe God enough to sit down, no bread for you. You have to, you have to prove that you, sitting down means be at rest. Because your standing is, let me watch in case it doesn't happen. Let me quickly dodge. And God says, I don't walk like that. You must be still. Then you will know that I am God. You can't be busy and say, Lord, be proving it while I wage my faith because I'm used to you disappointing me. No. Ah, I love Esther. If I perish, I perish. Are there such people this night? Men who will believe God. I'm motivating you and speaking over your life to continue and be consistent. Who told you it will never come to pass? The person who is laughing at you is also on earth trying to figure out his own life. What confidence do they have? It's like two people, you are writing an exam that the person is laughing and say you are sweating, Abby. Whereas he's writing the same exam. Is he not foolish? I'm speaking to somebody here by the spirit of the living God that the Egyptians you see today that have mocked you. The Egyptians you see today. You are not the first to see Egyptians. This man standing before you. Lives with Egyptians. It's not that I saw them. There, there, there is a level you get to as a leader. You don't conquer challenges. You walk through them. They, are, they become your companions. <laughs> Ah, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I fear no evil. He says, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then he says this, thou prepare. You are not in a hurry, you are taking your time to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. We are going to pray. God is ministering to us. 
please, I want to challenge somebody. Go back and hold that thing you were doing and continue. I don't know who asked you to stop that business. I know what stopped you. Pain stopped you. You opened the shop and everything dried. Go and open it again. Let them laugh at you. Go and open it. When you succeed, they will bite their words again. Are we together? Yeah. Don't mind Nigerians and their sarcastic way of laughing people out of destiny. That's why only few people ever succeed. Are we together? The Lord is asking me to prophesy to someone here that you should go back to what he asks you to do. God asks you to put your hand on that plow. I'm speaking specifically concerning work and career and business. There are people God directed to certain things. But because of your pain and failure, you are saying, look, I'm, I, I want to follow the path of least resistance. That's the path of failures. Are we together? Yeah. Never allow pain stop you from being consistent. Never allow the mockery of people. While they were mocking Noah, he was busy building the ark. While they were mocking him, after 90 years he continued. 100 years he continued. After 120 years, God said, Noah, get into the ark. I'm about to send the rain as I said. God told you this year you will hold your first million and you are saying, God, this is June. This is June and God said, don't insult me. I am more than able to wipe your tears. It's up to you to believe God. Oh, this year you will get married. God, as I'm speaking to you right now, there is no man in my life. The last man who came came as as careless as he came, that's how he went. And God says, it doesn't matter. How long does it take to settle you? Let me tell you, it doesn't take time to marry. It just takes vision and finances. Once there is no money, you shift dates. When God brings his blessings, he brings every resource to make it happen. Are we together? God said you will be gainfully employed this year. It's June. And the last place... Where you were holding on to. Air Force. Just came out day before yesterday. Your name is not there. Are we together? The person who would help you just called and said, Look, young man. Um, I thought we'll be able to fix you up at Shell or Chevron. But I'm sad to announce to you, even us, we are standing to maintain our position. And then you will know that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. That's the time to hand over to God. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord. time. Lord, I believe. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with thee. We are going to pray. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by to bring his word to pass. He reigns. Our God is an awesome. Rise up on your feet. Oh. Uh -huh.
voice and say, Lord, I challenge unbelief. I'm a believer. You are not a liar. When you speak, you bring your word to pass. Are you praying inside and outside? I believe you. 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 Go ahead and say, Lord, I believe you. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. I hold on to prophecy. I hold on to prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry before God. Tell him what must happen in your life this night. What you are tired of that must leave you today. Not tomorrow. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. The power of God is able to touch you and change your situation. You've had the testimonies of others. Pray, pray. It's part of the meeting. Tonight, I hold on to the four horns of the altar. Don't stop, you are praying. The Lord will do a quick walk here tonight. Change my story, oh God. Change that genotype, oh God. Open up that womb, oh God. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Please. 
send your anointing in this place. Send your anointing in this place. Send your anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everybody. Tonight will be an extraordinary night. It will be very fast what the Lord will do. Very fast. The message is what you have received. Very fast. I like you to expect miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, no instruments. Stop. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. That's the instruction God is giving me. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray. I want to pray, and I'm hearing the word breakthrough. That's the first thing I'm praying for. Listen, please. The moment I begin to pray that prayer of breakthrough, I want you to bring everyone under the anointing for that word. For some of you to surprise you the way the power of God will come upon you. I tell you, the moment the power of God touches you, know that this prophecy is for you. I hear the word breakthrough. Breakthrough. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are. Right now. I stretch my hands across the length and breadth of this congregation. Right now. Everyone under the influence of this prophetic word. Right now. Right now. Right now. The first overflow outside, right now, right now, right now, breakthrough. There is an angel of the Lord identifying men. Breakthrough. Bring them in. Breakthrough. Kata la kata. Zekata rekotosia. It's time for you to step into levels of breakthrough. 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 I prophesied as I mentioned that word. The grace, the anointing is visiting you. That stumbling block leaves you now. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Angels of breakthrough. I release them across this congregation right now. In all the overflows, the thousands following us online. Breakthrough, the power of God is touching you right where you are, right now. Right where you are, breakthrough. Shaba katala katia. Mande brakesi kataya. The Lord will do a quick work tonight. A quick walk tonight. He's touching you without delay. Without delay. If it's your case, God visits you at once. If it's your case, God visits you at once. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. That's what I hear in my spirit. There are still others. There are still others. I see another wave of anointing coming. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs, that's what God is bringing right now. We'll be very fast tonight, our time is gone. I tell you, there is enough anointing for anything you want. It's going to be a fast word. The Lord told me once, I mentioned the case. His power moves. I hear delay in my spirit. Get ready. Keep playing, Mike. Be sensitive, please. The strings. Right now, everyone under the influence of the spirit of delay. Delay. Just for delay. Right now. Right now, like a string cut from you. Right now, like a string cut from you. Inside and outside. I command that spirit to leave. Delay, delay, delay. Any destiny here under the influence of delay, you can't stand it. You can't stand it. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost destroying delay. That embargo of delay, you are caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Shabakatala Pasia. Reketeketele Bokosuba. 
the spirit of delay. I curse you over God's people. This is a miracle service. Delay that has kept you down, that has kept you down, that has kept your family down. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. The Lord wants to visit families. The second overflow outside, I see the Lord touching men. As I begin to pray right now, every family under any embargo, at the count of three, fire falls on you now. One, two, three. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Inside, outside. Embargoes over families. Embargoes over families. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire by the message of the God of heaven. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. It's coming on you like rain, like the dew of heaven. Take that fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who this mama is, but madam, an angel of the Lord is touching you right now. As I'm speaking to you, fire is coming upon you. An angel of the Lord right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh God, once again confirm this call and anointing. Karapo shopara tu sotopan. Kepereto supreti sekete baladabash. Hallelujah. 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 I'm seeing several gates opening. Hear me. And the Lord said, this is the womb of many people. Please, I want to pray for you right now. The Lord is opening barren wombs. That's what God is showing me. Whether miscarriage or no children completely, I don't care what it is. Lift your hands for you and for your loved ones. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the power to perform be released right now. Every barren womb for you and your loved ones. I open it right now, right now, right now, right now. I open every barren womb. I open every barren womb. Right now, every barren womb. Be open. Be open. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Kapatalaka. Sheketeketereposia. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Be open. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the doors. I command every close door over your destiny. Open up the gates. The gates. Open up the doors. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every gate and every door over my destiny be open right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Be open. There is an anointing to open it. Every gate, every door, kaparakata, kepere shopa. Fire is burning in this place. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now.
Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every chain tying my life, stopping me from making progress. In the name of Jesus. Chains be broken. Open your mouth and pray. I break that chain. I break that chain. Kabataya. It's time to move forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to challenge powers. I tell you, there are spirits that sit on the destinies of people. I believe that the prayer I'm about to pray for you right now will challenge this spirit. Hear me. There are men, there are women under the influence of strange spirits. That's right. That will stop them from advancing. But right now, at the count of three, everywhere in all the overflows, Father, I pray, once again, validate this anointing. Once again, validate this apostolic and prophetic call. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. And I command every spirit to leave. One, two, three. Right now, right now, every power, every spirit, every power, every spirit, out of them now out of their destiny now strange spirits strange spirits like fire it comes upon you the refiner's fire setting men free hallelujah hallelujah please lift your hands Lift your hands. I tell you, I feel this thing on me right now. Ah! I want to pray for you. Watch this. The Lord is showing me a vision. And this is what I see. I see stones and I see fire falling on it. And the Lord says, these are the altars that have kept destinies down. Hear me. If you belong to this category, physical fire physical fire will come on you. That devil must give way. Right now, I stand upon this apostolic call. I stand upon this prophetic call. Right now, fire, fire, fire on every devil. Fire on every spirit. Fire on every altar. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn every altar. Let it burn every altar. Release God's people. Release God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying. I see the Lord giving certain men direction. That direction will come like an anointing. You are asking God, what should I do? Where should I go? Right now, where are they, oh God? The power of God is coming on them. That's direction. You are receiving direction right now. Wherever you are, direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Confusion is ending. Direction on ministry. Direction on career. Direction on marriage. It comes to you right now. Right now. By the anointing. Direction is coming. 
Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction that we should pray in the spirit for five minutes intensely. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Something will happen to you. Go ahead. Blast in tongues for the next five minutes. Come on, pray. Fire is burning. Fire is burning. I tell you, pray in the spirit. Fire is burning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is Regina? Regina. I hear a name Regina. Regina. Fire is burning in this place. The Lord is going to do a quick walk. Quick walk. Mighty walk. No power will stand tonight. No power will stand tonight. I command every power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. You know, bad days are times when unusual requests are granted. It was during Herod's birthday that the head of a prophet went. Are we together? The best way to celebrate your birthday is to dethrone principalities and powers. Every spirit represented here, I'm saying it again right now. No matter where you are hiding, I stand under this apostolic and prophetic anointing. If I be called and sent of God right now at the count of three, on your mark, get set. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Pack your load. Pack your failure out of their destinies. Hallelujah. Regina. You are Regina, ma. Please come. Come on. I have to pray for you. I'm looking at you, Ma, and I'm seeing the spirit of death upon you. Don't, don't, I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. I look at you, and I'm looking at a corpse, like somebody that has died. I'm seeing, uh, what they call it, um, um, cotton wool in the nose and the ears, as I'm looking at you physically. And the Lord is saying it's time for your miracle. I don't know what is wrong with you. Come. Walk to me, ma. Hold my hands. Right now, I command that spirit. Your time is over. Right now. Out! Right now. Be gone. Now. Be gone. Right now. Out! 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. It's time for this woman's deliverance. Who brought her? Who brought this madam? What's wrong with her? Come, talk to me. Oh, 
chronic leg ulcer. Ah, I see it here. It's not healing. What is it? It's rotting or something. It's rotting. It's refusing to dry up. That devil. Madam, you feel pain on your legs? Pain on your legs. You believe God will heal you? A spirit just left you. That's what they call leg ulcer. And the reason, I don't know if they diagnosed you, but I'm looking at you, and I'm not even seeing a woman healed of ulcer. I'm seeing a woman healed of diabetes. Huh? That's the cause of this thing. That's why it's not here. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit is telling me. This thing is diabetes, and that's why this thing is not healing. Stand up. Walk. Carry her up. Oh, God, help your mother now. Why are you watching? Madam, look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ. No, no, you don't have to lift it. I bring life to these legs. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Move it. Move it. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Just look at me. Move it. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Walk. Come. Come to me. Come. Come. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Look at this. Go ahead, lift it up. Look at this. Look at a miracle happening to her. She's still under the power of the Holy Ghost. A miracle is happening to her. In the name of Jesus, lift it up. That devil goes. I command it to dry now, not later, right now. It dries up. Dries up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Lord Regina. Hallelujah. There is a lady from Kogi State. Right now, I don't know where she is, but you will locate her by a shout. I sincerely don't know what I'm saying. It's under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There is bondage that has been for so long in your family. And God is saying today, you are, you are set free. From Kogi State, one lady, fire will land on her wherever she is. Whether it, where is she from? Who knows her? Where is she from? Eh? Is she from Kogi State? Bring her out. It's time for the salvation of your family. I stretch my hands on you and I challenge every altar standing against your family. They must let you go right now. Right now. Release her. I stand by an anointing and I, I challenge you. You are living right now. The Lord of Sabaoth brings judgment upon you. In the name of Jesus. Right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Release her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I don't know what God is doing with Kogi people. I'm hearing Okene, 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 Okene. Okene is a place in Kogi state. There is a visitation coming to that territory. Right now, people who belong from that territory... An anointing is coming right now. I'm not saying you should clap. I'm saying you should receive right now. I don't know where they are. But all those from Okene, I release an anointing right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. Strange visitations. God is bringing visitation to that territory right now. If you are from that place, that name is a code in the spirit. It locates you wherever you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Hallelujah. Please, everyone, stretch your hands towards me. I see something. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Stretch your hands towards me. I see something like medals being given to people. 
And the Lord is saying, as this medal comes, he's increasing the grace upon their lives. Like medals. That's what I'm saying. And the Lord said, you should stretch your hands. I release my hands back to you right now. Not everybody, but there are people, wherever they are. Shatabata. Rise, rise, rise. Rise in the spirit. Rise in the spirit. Rise in the spirit. Hallelujah. Prayer HOD. Come and hold your hands of your assistant quickly. Come and stand. Two of you, hold your hands and lift it up. A new grace. The gifts of the spirit is coming on both of you right now. Strange gift. The Lord is saying it's the season for you to begin to walk in the gifts of the spirit. The gifts of the spirit. Lift your hands. I see gifts falling on people. Gifts falling on people. Gifts, 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 gifts. Gifts right now. Gifts. Help them, please. Help them. Gifts. There are men of God receiving gifts. Men of God. Men in ministry receiving gifts right now. I activate it. I activate it. Kapatayada. I activate it right now, right now. Gift, gift, the prophetic. Gift, the prophetic. Gift, the prophetic. Eyes to see, ears to hear. Eyes to see, ears to hear. Kapashakata. Padikatari kabaritos. Job said there is a part which no eye has seen. The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. Hallelujah. I'm still praying for gifts again because I see it. Hear me. There are many people you don't hear me pray this prayer but I hear word of knowledge there are people who need to step into the revelatory gifts of the spirit wherever you are I stand upon this anointing receive it right now revelatory gifts revelatory gifts revelatory gifts ay, 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 ay. revelatory gifts kapatata rakatata abarata I stretch my hands, step into that level. The word of knowledge, the gift of prophecy, the discerning of spirits. Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking at a vision the Lord is showing me. And I'm seeing the exact color of my dress. And the Lord says it's a mantle of favor. Listen. It's going to mantle people right now as I speak. Please hear me. Lift your hands. Favor. It's a mantle. You can wear it like a garment. Father, I pray. There are people, this is the miracle you need. That mantle of favor. Across this building, the overflow, the next overflow, online, right now, on everyone, everyone under the sound of my voice, may mantles of favor come upon you right now. Mantles of favor come upon you right now. Lord, on everyone, 
Let no one be left. Let no one be left. Wear it like a garment. Wear it like a garment. Wear it like a garment. Let it open strange doors for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. My goodness. Now, listen. Before we pray for the sick, there's no time to just pray and ask them to come. And so we'll pray for the sick. But before we do that, if you have your prayer request, lift it up. This is very strange what the Lord shows me. Usually, we bring it out and lay it here. But the Lord is asking, please, if it's in a phone, maybe your loved ones wrote it, leave the phone up. It's not, we're not playing games. Please, please, don't come and waste your time. There is a God that answers prayers. My dear, come. You are Regina. I have to pray for you. Because the Lord is telling me that he wants to end captivity in your family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a lot of suffering and pain in your family. And the Lord is asking that I pray for you. Number one. Number two, for you. The Lord is saying I should tell you. It stops. I don't know what is that. But the Lord is saying it stops. From today it stops. Hold my hands. Father, bring your word to pass in the life of this lady. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Over your family. I command that that pain, that captivity comes to an end. And for you, the prophecy is that it stops. I don't know what it is, but I stop it right now. Right now. Right now, right now, right now, it stops. Kaba Shiba Ratusia. Ende la Rusa Prasku Barita Shubriata Baladaba. Those online, I know that there are hundreds of prayer requests. No problem. The media department is stretching it by faith. Those outside, don't worry, you will lift it before we submit it. If there's something you should write and you've not written, you will quickly write it before we pray. But the Lord is just asking me to lift it up. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray on it. And the Lord says for us to hold it. And just pray in tongues for just a minute. Seriously and violently on your request. Are we together? In one minute, just speak over it. Are you not the God that answers prayers? Lord, when you speak, it may look foolish. When you speak, it may look foolish. But we choose to be foolish in obedience to your word. Pray! Answers are falling. Answers are falling from heaven just in one minute. Answers are falling. Answers are falling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift it up. Lift it up. I want to speak over it. The Lord is going to open the eyes of many people here as I pray. And you will see the requests on fire. Physically. At least I see seven people having this experience. Physically. You will see fire. I'm not saying physical fire. I'm saying when the Lord opens your eyes, you will see it as though burning. That's what is going to happen. Father, you have given an instruction. We are foolish enough to obey you. Right now, upon this request, the fire that brings performance. The fire that brings answers. Let it begin to follow God. On prayer requests right now. Let the fire that brings answers fall on them turning the requests into testimonies turning the requests kabashikata ente karata there's authority in this place 
turning the requests into testimonies. Hallelujah. Now begin to forward them to the ushers. Please, ushers, quickly start collecting them. While they are doing that, please be careful with those in front. Some of them are under the anointing, so don't match them. You are here trusting God for healing. Specifically, I want to lay my hands on you now. Make your way to the front. You came with a sick person. It's time to bring them to the front very quickly. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, we believe. I like you to believe the Lord. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. Let your faith be alive. The power of God is already touching people. It's flowing, Jesus. We me please listen i don't care what the name of that sickness is you must refuse and insist that plus your hair falling you must be healed are you hearing don't say this one is not serious uh -uh. when you are coming here insist and say lord from my head to my toe i must be healed as we minister to you by the power of the holy ghost the anointing is already touching people. Some of you, we may not even need to come close to you. It's the power of God. While that is happening, I want everybody in the congregation, we are going to maintain an attitude of prayer. No carelessness and gisting around. Begin to speak to God concerning your prayer request. There are so many people who are proud to tell you this is a place of healing. In every city and in every territory, God must find a place where he can extend his healing power to his people. The Lord is showing me all kinds of infirmities. HIV, diabetes, tumor, breast lump, breast lump, a lot of breast lump. The Lord is going to heal you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ejimi, please come. We're going to pray. Listen. There is the anointing upon him. Come, Ejimi. There's fire upon my hands. And I want you to touch that anointing. Go ahead. That anointing. That's what the Lord says. I should tell you. To touch my hands and touch that healing anointing. That healing power. Miracle worker. Ah. You are the miracle worker. Come, come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Father, please heal everyone here. Everyone. And for those you are standing for, you have the photos of any everyone. Don't worry. While we are coming, just show the photos, whether it's phone or whatever. We will lay hands on it. Believe God. Please, no commotion. As we pray for you, just gently walk to your seat. Because of time, we don't take instant testimonies. Please forgive us. But make sure you are praying. Don't just stand looking at others carelessly. Let your heart be open. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Help us. You made a way. Stretch your hands towards the prayer requests and begin to speak over them. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Those, those being prayed for, don't worry. Just focus. We're praying for you. But everyone, pray on the request. Out! Right now. Stretch your hands on the request and pray. I command the spirit of death to leave you right now. Please stretch your hands. Make sure you are talking to the Lord. We are not just whiling away time. You can move the mountains. 
prophesy and say, Lord, you will visit me, you will visit my request. right now. Go forever. Never to return. I command that spirit to leave her. Out! Out! Right now. time is gone. Thank you for your patience. It's called a miracle service. Please stretch your hands here. 
those still on the healing lines, don't worry, Jimmy will handle you. Please stretch your hands. Let's save time very quickly. Prophesy, we're not wasting time, please. I want you to understand the nature of the service and what we're doing. Outside, in any of the overflows, just stretch your hands and let's trust the God that heals. Go ahead and pray. Shabarako subredita shabriada. Embrakata braske braheshi barada balada 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 ba. Are you praying? Prophesy. Kaprish karatu sifriana kala balada ba. Lord, we declare the miracle working power of Jesus. The miracle working power of Jesus. The miracle working power of Jesus. Shabrakato subrende sharapa kuratia. Go ahead and prophesy, Lord, I declare that these requests are turned to testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we declare. We declare, we have brought them before the altar. They will never return to your life. You have handed it before the altar. It will never return to your life. You've handed it before the altar of God. It will never return to your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do three things very quickly. Very, very quickly. I'm going to speak over our lives right now. Immediately after that, we take the altar call. Our time is gone, but even if it's two minutes, we have to give people who are making commitments for the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody, and receive the final prophecy. These prophecies are powerful. That's why you hear people returning back with testimonies. The prophetic words change lives. In my opinion, you've heard me say it again and again. I believe this is the most powerful part of the miracle service. Not everyone may come out here. Not everyone may fall under the anointing, but the prophecy can come upon everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. These Egyptians that you see over your life, over your destiny, I declare that by this miracle service, you see them no more forever. I declare that you see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has delayed you, the level you are supposed to have been, I don't know what that level is, but I don't know what stopped you from getting to that level right now. Between now and next miracle service, run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced. Run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced. Run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced. I pray for the works of your hands that has refused to grow. In the name of Jesus, I declare the month of June and July months of supernatural increase. That which is upon your hand is compelled to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor you have not seen from beginning of this year to this mid-year, I command in the name of Jesus, you will experience it. You will experience it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Revive now thy work in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year. It says revive now thy work. I don't know what has gone cold in your life. Maybe your prayer life. Maybe your word life. But by the message of the God of heaven I pray. Let there be revival for you right now. Supernatural revival for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before danger shows up in your life, may God give you the eyes to see. Before men conspire against you, may God open your eyes to see. Hallelujah. Where men have said you can never get to, the embargo they have put on your destiny, I tear it out of your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. That unction, that anointing that gives men capacity to be extraordinary, I command it to fall upon you right now. 
I command it to fall upon you right now. For all final year students, there is a finisher's anointing. The grace that grants men access to finish. In the name of Jesus, as you push this one last time, may the heavens push with you. May the heavens push with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every disfavor, every bad luck, everything that does not represent the aura of favor in your life, I drive it far from your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever makes money run away from your hand, whatever makes it to change direction when it's almost getting to you, I command that spirit to live your life forever. I release abundance of financial supplies to you. Abundance of financial supplies. The spirit of fear that has stopped you from rising up and doing big things. In the name of Jesus, as this month comes to an end, it drives that spirit out of your life. I will always pray this prayer for you. I call again the helpers of your destiny. I don't know how to make you believe the power of this prayer. But in the name of Jesus, may they appear in your life. Hallelujah. I want to pray a special prayer for you. One of the blessings that God has given me in my life is unusual access. God has given me strange dimensions of access. Access to men of influence. Access to men of authority. I pray for you in this season. Whatever will connect you to men of influence, not just men who can help you, but men who have the ability to help you. May that connection happen in the name of Jesus. May that connection happen in the name of Jesus. Everything that has died in your hands, I don't care for how long, in the name of Jesus, I command resurrection upon it. I pray for you. The resources you have in your hand, grace comes upon it to multiply. Grace comes upon it to multiply. Grace comes upon it to multiply. In the name of Jesus. The presence of God that has distinguished men in this ministry. May that supernatural glory, that presence, may that aura go with you everywhere you go. Whoever has said no to you, I change their statements. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for your spiritual hunger. What good is it if you get money, you get all of these things, and with it you lose your passion? That whatever you lose in life, may your passion for God not be one of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you submitted here as a prayer request, we turn it to your testimony. We turn it to your testimony. We turn it to your testimony. In this period of my birthday, as the Lord blesses me, I pray that he will bless you too. Believe me, I'm praying for you from my heart that whatever God does for me, by his mercies, the mercies of the God of David, may he do it for you. As God lifts me, may he lift you. As God wipes my tears, may he wipe your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next time we're looking for men to stand and testify genuinely in the name of Jesus, May your testimonies be so heavy you cannot sit back there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone called barren, go and return with your miracle children. Everyone called jobless, go and return with a miracle job. Everyone due for promotion. You had the testimony of Prof. 
in the name of Jesus, may the God that lifts men promote you. Promote your loved ones. Promote you and your loved ones. In the name of Jesus. May you wake up in the morning and return back with miracles that will bring tears in your eyes. While you are sleeping, may God wake somebody to be wondering what to bless you with. Ay, 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 ay. Our time is gone, but receive this. I say it again, that while you are sleeping, may somebody else stay awake wondering how to bless you. Every gift you have, but there is no platform to give it expression so that it will bless you. There are many of us who have potentials, but those who need it, that access to them is far. I connect you to those who need your gift. I connect you to those who have the grace to celebrate you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. While others are walking, may you fly by the wings of the Spirit. May you fly by the wings of the Spirit. Don't doubt the prayer I'm praying for you. Don't let the devil make you think he's just talking. I'm not just talking. I say it again. While men are walking, may the Lord give you wings with which you will fly. Every family represented here, not just as individuals, as a family, return with your testimony. What you have been praying for to happen in your family, I declare that between now and the end of June, may you begin to record testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two minutes very quickly. You're surrendering your all and your heart to Jesus. Please keep standing, no movement around. There are two sets of people I want to invite here quickly. Those who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord, but I need his help in my life. And those who are saying, I have never even made that commitment. Please, let's rise as we honor them. They need to be encouraged. I know there are people like that. We don't want to cajole you. God has spoken to your heart already. Outside and in any of the overflows, make your way to the front right now. Please, we have one minute for this. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for the first person. God bless you. Run out. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord is speaking to you and he's saying, make your ways right. Make your ways right. It doesn't matter what you have done. God is giving you as many chances as will take to be restored to him. Make your way to the front. You need Jesus. The Lord is calling you. God bless you. Please, if you are coming, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up so that we save time. Clear the way for them, especially in the overflow outside. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Lift your hands. If you are coming out, then join them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. We're hurrying up, but it doesn't mean we're joking. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you, and I believe in you. Tonight, I surrender my heart. I surrender my life. I surrender my all. Take me, use me, anoint me for your glory from today. I am yours forever. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this prayer will be sealed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. You keep rising from glory to glory. Your love and passion for God will never diminish. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for answer of the altar call. Just make your way out. There's someone waving his hand. They are waving their hand to you and they'll have your details. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny.
Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos, Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline. 